Yeah, but didn't Doc Brown say that actually that was a misnomer? Oh my god. It's a bit like somebody when they get naked and they're like, don't look. You're like, come on. <laughs> I find this never happened. That never happened to me. <laughs> finding it, finding it really weird. Holy shit. We're live. I can see us. Stop looking. No, I've got it teeny tiny. Oh man, the delay. <laughs> yeah, I can hear everyone's voice. Yeah, firstly, dust off, um, dust off the D and D dust, and remember what an SP two is. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, to this cheeky bat in the centre, right next to him, I think a little a little rapier action will be will be the case today. So that's a nine. That is a starting a, strong. A, <laughs> I will just th throw the sword in the air. Will uh, bonus action disengage, and I <laughs> I'd like to run him over to this spot here so you can see that. So I'd like to run all the way over to here. <coughs> okay, so I've got my um, I've got my martyrdom active, which is my kind of castellan ability. Um, I've got this white kind of smoke, like fog lifting off me. I'm tired. 
I've just been kind of trying to hold back this massive insectoid. Um, let's see, I am going to, so I've got my shield up between kind of me and the, the giant bug, um, kind of, my kind of hair is matted to my face. I'm going to look back over my shoulder, um, just to see what's going on. Um, and then I'm going to kind of point my shield down, I'm going to shield blast, um, the bug in front of me. Homebrew characters, uh, classes. I love this. <coughs> so my shield is this giant kind of ornamental kind of, I guess in our world, Japanese umbrella, and it's got this kind of obsidian kind of sheen to it, which is kind of my fortress world element. And <coughs> what happens is this smoke kind of comes off me and kind of charges the shield, which glows like white hot. Um, before just kind of expelling all the energy in the direction that I'm pointing it. And at this point I'm kind of crouched down, and I'm like kind of trying to hide behind it because I know this thing spits kind of acid, um, or some kind of orange kind of burning goo. Um, and I'm just screaming as I release it, and I'm like, ah! How's that? Oh, what? <laughs> Might need some help, guys. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> um, no, I, so I kind of, I get ducked down behind my shield and I turn around and I'm looking and I see kind of just, I just shout kind of, sound off, guys. Um, because I'm concerned, I'm actually getting quite worried. I can't see everyone. Can I, from this position, I can see all yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm kind of I'm panicking a little bit. I don't know where kind of Truffle and Lysander are. So I just shout back into the cave, sound off. Oh. Oh, dear. How dreadful. Um, so I think he's going he's to pop his head out. He's going to pop around. Oh dear. <laughs> Frightfully. He goes, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um, <clears throat> and look at Truffle. So what's Truffle doing? Is he is he just chilling? <clears throat> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna point my cane this chap here, and then whisper into it, you little fine little shit, uh, and then I'm going to vicious mockery it. So that's a uh, DC 15 with save for a big fat one psychic damage. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you take one, that's right, one psychic damage. And then I kind of Gingerly, <laughs> pop back over here, and that's my that's my turn. That is that is pretty rad. Let me let me just double check this out for you. All right. My my bad. That is not disadvantage. It just needs to whenever it, when it. <coughs> I'll get the name. Um, it's just whenever you make an attack roll or saving roll, um, it's a, a negative um, D4. So it's nothing to do. With
Hold on to your horses, guys. Good guy from back. Good luck. Incorrect. You just dodge out of the way of that flap and fool. I do. I'm a nimble fellow. the blistering speed of my rapier air attack is enough to terrify any kind of winged mammal. Uh, yes, this is damage. Wow. So, the 16. <laughs> Sure. How long does what last? Joe's Law. Sorry, I can't hear Paul. You're muted, You're Joe. You're unmuted. <laughs> oh, it's there forever, dude. I'm literally a, uh, a landscaper right now. So, it's erected. Yeah, and it's kind of like, it's, it's from my fortress world, kind of, which is this, this planet <coughs> in kind of far beyond the stars or where I draw my power from. It's uh, because of the type of uh, castellan I am. It's kind of volcanic obsidian material, so it's like this kind of black, matte, kind of crystalline stuff. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm worried. I can kind of I can feel vibrations through the earth, right? Uh, right. So pretty, pretty irate about uh, getting continuously attacked by these bloody bats. Uh. But as I recall, I just uh, I just blew my load a bit, so to speak, the last time I attacked. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a breather this turn, and I don't actually have a macro for this yet because I haven't updated it. But I am going to I'm just gonna sort of in in my fury wipe a bit of the the blood off my wound onto onto my onto my knife and uh, give it a thorough stabbing. Yeah, I'm just I'm just updating it. So y you've changed bloody blades so to replace dueling, right? Yeah. So I need to take the plus two off that basically, right? <laughs> So I'll just take the plus two off of that. And then I'm going to add the 1d4 to that. Does that seem right? So you basically change bloody blades. Yeah. So I've taken away the extra dueling damage.
Joe DiMaggio's. Your stream paused, by the way, my friend. And that's why I'm here. Is it Laura Morin for the time being? <laughs> she is. She is ever more annoyed that this stupid bloody bat is not dead yet. Uh, but there's nothing she can do about that. Uh, this turn. Oh, this is really exciting. I'm not gonna lie, I've just dodged a couple of bats, um, missed a couple of bats. Uh, they've missed me though, so it's totally fine. And I think I am going to rapier him. That's use my rapier on the bat, um, just in case the bat is delayed in sound quality. So this is incredibly <laughs> exciting. To be fair, I've never really been in a cave before, let alone seen these giant bats. I assume they're fruit bats. What kind of bats are they? I've read about them. Big bats. Okay, let's poke some pretty big holes in them. So that's a bit of a rapier attack. And that is that is a 13 to hit. Easy to hit. Oh, hello. Just at the tip, just a tip. Tip. Um, and then I'm gonna roll for damage, and that is that is a seven, but Ooh. I'd also like to add Fury of the Small to that. So that is an additional three hit points to it. So that is a ten. Explosion! <laughs> hey! Well, ladies and gentlemen, it was quite exciting. Um, as he pulls out the rapier, actually, if you look at the tip, it just does a little, ding, little shine. And then the wind around it kind of just starts to churn. A little vortex, if you will, and then before you know it, that rapier has passed shish kebab style straight through that bat. <laughs> and then with a flick, a Wingardium Leviosa squish and a flick, the bat is dropped to the floor. Dead for Shire. <laughs> Truffle! Truffle has read a lot about it. Um, he's seen some, some, some pretty mean fights on the streets. He's seen his fair sh share of stabbing. And to be honest, it's a bat. It's very exciting. I will look at exploring what that bat is and look at it in a bit more detail afterwards. But for now, he's kind of got a little bit of a red mist. This is part exciting, part fury in his, in his eyes. That goblin instinct seems to have sort of somewhere deep down inside him. That primal rage is sort of bubbling up. Um, so yeah, I think there's a little switch in, in Truffle for a moment, um, and Truffle's not a big fan of flying, uh, creatures in general. Fun little fact for you there. I, Truffle will move over to this pillar again, and, uh, take a little bow at the back. End of move. No, okay, so I am, I'm concerned, I, I don't know what to do, I'm kind of looking around, did I see Orin, kind of, I was looking back, right, back into the cave, did I see Orin kind of do a flame move? Yeah, and do, do, do I know kind of what Orin is at this stage, and the, the, com the combat, yeah. Okay, uh, uh, what do I what do I know about them generally, kind of at the highest level? Okay. 
okay. Um, I think uh, so. I'm okay with that. I, I kind of know know that. So I'm hearing this thing rumbling. Can I get an, any idea about where it is? Is it underneath me? Is it kind of? Is it heading away from me? Because my concern right now is for the party. I'm scared for the kids. been in combat before <coughs> I'm what okay I'm gonna run back and uh, I see this I see this bat attacking Orin right I'm gonna run back and uh, I'm gonna sm like as I'm running I'm gonna jump and I'm gonna smack it with my shield Ooh, so six <laughs> does that hit Um, okay, so I'm going to move to here. Um, I see Truffle. <laughs> Check he's okay. I look over a little bit concerned. You know, my head, my face is like... Okay. <laughs> kind of uh, plastered with kind of hair. I'm built up with a sweat at the moment. This is the most I've ever kind of fought in a, in, in a long time. Um, and I think... The beast is going to come up behind me, so I just kind of flick back and I get ready to uh, to deal with whatever is beneath the surface of this floor. You idiot. Not an idiot. <coughs> Classic Lysander, he's going to pop his little head out. Scurry along the edge of the wall. Oh dear. Mm. <laughs> oh, I'll shout out. Where's the big one gone? I guess I Can I reply saying. back, DM? Yeah, so really quickly. It's underground, Lysander! Oh dear. Uh, I will. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hold my action. And when it pops up, I'm going to hit it with my black bolt. So I'm just going to kind of t like leaning around the pillar with my cane ready, like, <laughs> get you. He's going to get more and more Russell Brand, I think, as this game goes on. <laughs> Whiff. Orange just like <laughs> stupid bat. What is that? I've been fighting bats around corners for the last 20 minutes. What on earth is that? Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm going to have to stop muting myself. I was enjoying your Charlie Chaplin-esque.
good old history. Hit me in his bow. As opposed to that new history. <laughs> How much? Um, <coughs> that's a hit. I'm like screaming, like, ah! Did my black ball go off? Go off. I. <laughs> four, four, and twelve, so that's sixteen. Um, I guess. Mi yeah. Min minus one, which is kind of from my unrivaled resilience. My body has been trained. <laughs> I've got five temporary points from the fact of my denial tanking stance. Um, yep, so that's ten, ten points of damage to, to my health. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if it went, I'm good thing it didn't get borrowed. So I imagine I see this kind of acid spray or whatever hit uh, Orin. I'm like, it's all right, I've got it. Like point my cane at it and fire a black ball for a 26. And that's a, a big old 6 on the force damage. Just imagine like the light as it comes past. Like, Is it, is it bright? Uh, it's not. It's really dull. It's like uh, it's clear, but it's kind of surrounded by black. Um, so it like you know, kind of trickles through the air. Little. I can imagine yeah. like it, it, it kind of. Like, yeah, there was there was lots yeah. coming. Yeah, there was lots <laughs> coming on there. Kind of, I just imagine. I think in my mind as well, I noticed this bolt at the last second is in. Like I, I was a bit too late, and if I was, you know, kind of my instincts were that it was for me, but I kind of see it just fly past hit this giant bug as it kind of clamps onto me it's like i'm just like there's a lot going on i'm just screaming out in pain as it kind of proper latches onto me just like oh dear <laughs> <laughs> uh dan as a point apparently stream can't hear you yeah can see you speaking is hear everyone else but can't hear you good feedback say thank you Okay, so Oren has still got sufficient rage with this bat that it, she's got no interest in the giant insect that's just appeared beside her. Uh, although, there is now excitement in the fighting as well as the uh, <coughs> as well as the the rage. So she's just going to continue to attack the stupid. Bat. <laughs> uh, yeah, she is. I'm guessing that's a hit. What's that? So that's. Yeah. Oh wait, but was that the bat or the main one? I'm guessing that was the bat. It's a bat. It's a bat. It's a bat. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, with... I wasn't paying attention to that one for a second and got way too excited about a uh, the ad. <laughs> oh yeah, we're fucked with this bug thing. Yeah. Take that. So take that. she's she's just sort of swiping furiously at it. She just like swipes through the air and just like I don't know get gets one of its wings off or something and it just <laughs> splats. On the ground, and she's just like, ah, yeah. oh, that's wing and it just flaps down in this like smouldering heap. There's like tendrils yeah. of smoke coming off of it, and and you know once once that's dealt with, you know some of the some of the the rage leaves her a little bit. She gets a bit more clarity, and uh, she she realizes now that there is a some sort of large insect, I would say, uh, next to her. And yeah. Quickly, quickly decides. Uh, it kind of looks a lot like a large ant, but with bigger, like big claws as front legs. She sort of quickly decides 
this is the, not the best place for it. So, uh, can I can I squeeze through this gap beside it? Uh, yeah, you probably could. Yeah, it. yeah. So I would say it would be difficult terrain because it's quite narrow. As, as, or as you're moving, being a bit of a combat master, I yell to you, <laughs> watch out, don't give it the opportunity to attack. <laughs> uh, so I've just run around and positioned myself behind it uh, for multiple reasons. Uh, oh my. And I, I end my turn there. Okay. Mr. Davids. the horrific murder of said bat. Truffle <laughs> is going to slide round this pillar, almost like butter, if you will. Truffle butter. And as he pops his way out of that, he fires a crossbow bolt at the bug. And that is a 15 to hit. That does hits. It. That hits, yes. Oh yeah, it does. So, as the bolt leaves, flies through the air, quick, nimble, and does a horrific damage amount of eight into the thorax, one of the few body parts of a bug I know. <laughs> Which part of the bug is the thorax? It's not the antennae. It's, 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 like it's, like it's, like it's, it's in the butt. Okay. It's, Truffle. It's Truffle. The other part of the bug. Describe how you kill the bug. Actually, he was sort of, I don't know if I told you this, but Truffle, I believe, was sliding on his knees. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mention this before, but he was sliding before, on his knees. But for a little bit of flavor, that bolt, it felt like it had a little bit of English mustard on it, because that thing flew out a little bit faster than expected. As it flies through the air, hits the, um, the giant bug creature in the thorax, which we all know Oof. is a, a, a horrible place to get hit. Right in the thorax. <laughs> so, Oof. Sure draw a picture of this so we can really see and as it enters it, it leaves an exit wound uh, larger than, than, than uh, a head a melon if you will and, um, as it falls to the ground and bleeds out Truffle looks at the crossbow in, in sheer disbelief that he is a killing machine I think probably everyone else would be looking at you in disbelief as well so yeah, you see Truffle fire this boom, crossbow and it goes straight through this thing and it's like at, currently trying to like claw at Akane and bite at her and this thing just boom, goes through it and it's like pauses and then slowly crashes to the side and you're left with nothing but the continual whistling of the wind through this cave that you've been hearing the whole time. <laughs> and the combat is over. Oh, that was wicked. Truffle's gonna hand no, nail gun. Like, <laughs> Metal Gear Solid had <laughs> a crossbow. He was smoking a cigar as he did it as well. <laughs> he can't keep editing at the moment. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, yeah, you guys, you've had your, f now had the first taste of actual action with each other um what how does that feel for everyone what what are your reactions don't like it <laughs> that sounds like oh i think because i've got i've been hurt quite fairly badly i'm um i'm just going to kind of hold the wound and just kind of lean against the wall like at the back here just like ah uh, uh, i should have stayed in the apartment <laughs> <laughs> Oren is uh is all adrenaline still so she's got a bit of tunnel vision and hasn't really registered that she's a bit on the uh, beaten up side. She's, she's calming down. She's calming down. So uh, the fiery red has gone to a bit more of an orange ember, as envisioned by my lighting. Oh, very nice. So, yeah, as you guys all know, um, Orin is a fell, which is sort of quite an alien sort of species, but they're very common in 
Leodos, but they are humanoid, but they have this sort of like long hair which changes colour with their mood, and these bone-like markings that are like on their knuckles and across like the bony parts of their body, like their cheekbones and their elbows and stuff, and they also like mimic this uh, colour-changing emotion, and Orin's is like ready orange usually, and uh, it's, uh, so yeah, it's just changed back to like a more dim orange colour. Heavy breathing, you know, kind of I'm pretty old, right? You know, I'm in my late fifties. It's quite an exertion for me, but I think actually the overriding thing I'm feeling right now is joy and happiness. As I turn to Truffle, and I look at him. I see this kind of big toothy grin on his face about kind of what champion he is. And I kind of fall to my knees and I Truffle, darling, open my arms. Reciprocate, baby. Reciprocate. Uh, I mean, to be honest, Truffle is. Truffle comes and takes and happily accepts the hug, but uh, it's actually a little surprised at how little he feels about the death of these creatures. Um, combat for Truffle, although alien, is something that it hasn't actually hit him. Um, this feels totally normal, totally natural, and there's a lack of connection between um, the, the pain and violence he has caused and the, the feelings and... Um, emotions of what he's just done um it's just fairly normal <laughs> and so I, I kind of I, I pull him i pull him back and i stroke his his face and i kind of just like kind of get a bit mothery about him um <coughs> and I, I kind of like I, I look at him i'm like truffle that was amazing what you just did there that was that was that was phenomenal you you, you really helped me you saved me thanks like am, am i Am I a real adventurer now? Is that is that how it is? Is this how it's going to be? Because it's really easy. <laughs> and at that point, I kind of I'm laughing. I wince a little as I kind of oh, lean over. Are. Yeah, oh, that big that's thing that's got me. Wait, if we if we are okay of waiting for like I don't know half an hour, an hour. Um, I know this this, this special trick, and um, I c I can make that better for you. Um. And I'm like, oh, that's really sweet of you, uh, darling. <coughs> help, help me up, help our guy up. And I kind of I push off, push off your shoulders. I stand up, and I hobble over to 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 Orin. Um, I'm like, Orin, darling, have you seen Lysander? Actually, what do I what do I look what do I what am I seeing when I see Orin? How pa how so badly are you? Right, right now, Orin has uh, has, has calmed down a lot more, and now the the sort of Battle, battle fever has, has left her. She's just sort of like, she's looking at her hands and her arms and her, her dagger, which are all covered in blood. And you know, she looks like, I can't think of the right word, like almost like afraid of herself. Oh, not of herself, afraid of the blood, but do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so she's, she's, she is, away with the fairies right now she's got no awareness of you coming up to her okay so i kind of as i'm walking along i'll kind of bring my shield with me but I yeah she is quite cut up okay and so i pull this umbrella down and i kind of go over to her and i just put my hand on her shoulder and i'm like that was an amazing job honey you did really really well uh <laughs> thanks what I, I yeah, turn back to right, Truffle, yeah. and I'm like, Truffle, can you look, look after Orin? And I kind of stop, kind of walking off in search of Lysander. Sure, no problem. Hi. <laughs> I sort of, uh, like, you know, shake my head a bit, and sort of snap back to reality, and I'm like, Hey, buddy. Like, put on, on a brave face. Like, hats off. Did you make that massive hole? Absolutely, and oh man, that is I awesome! Use, I use several weapons, several, I so not, not just one. I only thought you had one. Yeah, so oh. did I. That's so <laughs> cool. <laughs> how you feeling, little? How you feeling? How you feeling, wee man? Um, 
So, it's like when, you know when you wake up in the morning and you're really sleepy, and then you go and you have like uh, a cup of coffee and your whole body's like tingling? I kind of feel like that. Um, so, great. I feel great. Do you feel great? Oh. You vanished. There you go. <laughs> you're back. <laughs> uh, yeah, great. Great, yeah. Happy for you. Tr and Truffle, you definitely wouldn't probably know anything about like a crimson blade and blood magic and that sort of thing. Absolutely not. It's so not very exciting, regardless. Yeah. Um, but are you hurt? I'm gonna show up. Um, I'm gonna show everyone because I'm worth. I, 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 yeah, I think so. Okay. Certainly so. looks that way, doesn't it? Okay. So, uh, Truffle, um, pulls out the flute. instrument and only thing that he's had um, since since being um, left in the town and and starts to play a, a, a tune um, a little, little like light little full melody um, fix it in post you can have that uh, sound later on <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah and as we do this because I'm assuming we're gonna talk we're gonna effectively take a uh, meta game short rest and uh, what we're gonna do is uh, everyone is going to get a D6 of health back to you, which to you guys is a <laughs> You guys get a two two points of health. Oh, you all feel a little tingle of something that well, Truffle does uh, this. And... The music moves you. Oh, hello. And, uh, feel a little bit better about yourself. A little less fatigued. A little, a little better. So, uh. If, if, it, guys, you guys if we have in fact taken a short rest, uh, are you guys uh, just are you guys just stopping here in the middle of this cave? Just to be um, clear, just for my interests. I mean, we're just we're just having a bit of a group together. Okay. <laughs> so, so I think we I think I, I just start playing your flute, right? Kind of, I'm, I'm already walking. I'm walking over to find Lysander. So I guess. You guys are starting your <laughs> your uh, sonnet, um, and as, uh, so I'm, I'm kind of hobbling over, and I'm trying to find Lysander at this point, um, yelling into the cave, Lysander. Yeah, I'm just I'm kind of leaning uh, against this. I'm kind of leaning against this wall here. So you kind of see me around. I've got my cane. I'm like over here, over here, and rattling my cane. Do you look bad? Uh, by posture, potentially. It's kind of like wave the cane and then lean on it, like, uh, like I'm so not pissing I... blood everywhere. <laughs> well, a couple, couple of points feeling better, am I right? <laughs> I feel exactly 10% better. <laughs> on a scale of 1 to 37, <laughs> I feel 29. Um... Okay, so I run over to, to you, Lysander, and I think this is the first time I've ever shown compassion for you. Um, <coughs> I'm quite serious at this point. Um, and I grab you by the shoulders and I try and stand you up. Um, how how do you react to that? I try and shoo. <laughs> don't, don't touch me. <laughs> Body <laughs> languages, don't touch me. I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Thank you. Just <sighs> prestidigitation. <laughs> get, <laughs> get the smell off. Uh, I just uh, so I, I turned to you. I said, "Look, we should go back and, and find Oren and Truffle. I think Oren's really injured. Truffle." And I lean in. And I'm just like, "We'll have to talk about it later." Um, he did exceptionally well, um, but I'm a little I'm a little concerned about how much he was enjoying it. Um, but that's all I say. Mm -hmm. I kind of lean back out again, um, and then I say, "Come on, let's get back. Let's get back to them." Yes, 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 yes. Lead, lead the way. I'll lean. I'll try and be un uh, look uninjured as possible, but I'm leaning on my cane a little bit more than usual. Okay, so I kind of, <clears throat> I start coming back with my shield, my umbrella, and I'm like wincing a little bit, but I'm gen generally okay. It's just my armor probably looks worse. You know, this red and black armor is just crushed on the arm and on the side where I was bitten. Um, 
bit sizzling still where kind of orange acid from this bug thing um, with the thorax. And uh, <laughs> I guess we come back to, we come back to the we come back to the group. I follow the sound of sweet, sweet flute melodies. And you and you feel a little better for it. I'm Every feeling step pretty good. You make just feels just feels a little bit but like like you've got cramp effectively in your foot <laughs> and you're just walking it off and that's what that sweet sweet lilt a gwent theme music sounds like other products are available <laughs> so uh, sorry just to be clear you guys have stopped here for a rest right just where, mean... just where you are what i'm doing is effectively meta forcing the group to wait an hour for a <laughs> part of the narrative no one asked for. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, you, please let that go. I would, I would want to ask, like, are we just planning on sitting here for... What are we doing? Should, should <laughs> so I, I turn around and I was like, I could probably use the time to inspect my armor for integrity. Um... I think we should probably check in and just talk about what happened. Um, that was the first time I think we've seen everyone everyone fight, and we probably need to make a decision about where we go from here um, because that was intense. That was intense. Yeah. So, um, so remember, you're currently in this larger sort of cavern. The the scene is quite vaulted, and there's still like smaller bats flitting around, but they're not like aggressive. Um, and to the south, you've got like a, a large opening that bends off into what looks like another corridor heading east and you passed as you're on your way in you passed like a small route on your right um, which you could have gone down as well so you've got two ways you could possibly go right now so i turn to the group as trouble is playing and i say look i think we should take maybe 30 minutes to an hour here just kind of <coughs> have a think about what we've done, talk over our battle plans, what just happened there. Um, but then I think we need to decide whether or not we continue. Um, we've got the glowing fungal room, or we can head, to, we can he keep heading south where that kind of beast came from. What does everyone think? I mean, we've got to find these these guys, right? I mean, we, we shouldn't wait any longer than 47 minutes. <laughs> 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 At least. But... I mean, Orange I just like guys. Oh, you, oh man, I forgot about the guys. Sorry. <laughs> Are they so they're going to be facing things like this? I mean, they're they're explorers, right? So so are they like us? Are they capable? Are they? I mean, for, that seemed pretty normal, but you, you know guys don't know from. what like. Just to clarify, you guys don't know anything about the expedition. They could be scientists. They could be Warriors, there could be a mixture, you know. Yeah, we know we know they're kind of wearing a dust traders. Um, yes. Tabar, don't we? Um, yeah. And they've been gone for a couple of days now. Yep. Okay, so I guess I, I spend the short rest um, just checking over the integrity of my armor. Um, occasionally, I guess everyone sees me just holding my hand over these plates as they kind of reform. Um, and seal themselves back together using some sort of uh, mending magic. Uh, oh <laughs> my! Um, and uh, just checking my shield, kind of for integrity uh, uh, as well. Cool. I think so, Lysander would be kind of tapping his foot, looking around nervously, like, and asking every ten minutes, like. Should we, uh, should we move on? Should we, should we go? Uh, while this is happening, Oren is, uh, gonna apply some first aid. But it's gonna take the form of a hit dice. Mm -hmm. Uh... And just for flavor, like, I'm gonna, like, be bandaging myself up. You're, uh, with rolling bandages from my healer's kit. You roll the d4 on your hit dice. I think yeah, roll, I think you're d Roll 20's right? got a new hit dice thing that oh. defaults it to d4. I don't even know how to change it. Just to roll uh, a d8. Yeah. It'll be d8, won't it? Yeah. Yeah. Next to where it says hit dice, you could just, there's a drop down menu. Yeah. Do, uh... Oh! Nah, hey. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. That's the good stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. It's almost like the flute music flows into your hand. <laughs> Capable of so, doing so uh, much more than you ever felt before. 
I don't I don't know if uh, the old DM will allow this, but for flavor, so I'm gonna bandage myself up and then like underneath the bandages, like when I'm confident no one can actually see any of the uh, any of the injuries, they're all just gonna seal themselves up. Awesome. Whoa. But that, that's that's hit dice rather than is that alright just for flavor? Yeah, totally. That's, yeah. that's right on uh, as a crimson blade would do, I think. How do I you would say... also like to roll a hit die if possible. You got hit? What hit you? Oh yeah, the bats are around you to start off with. Four. Fuck. <laughs> okay. How do you roll a hit die? Is it just click? Yeah, you just, just... Got kick a die. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't forget those sweet twos. Tap those in. <laughs> that so, that two got me back to max HP. <laughs> yeah, that got me almost up to max. <laughs> oh, I think I got hit by a bat last last time. Got swiped by a bat. You are quite oh, flimsy. Just, just one bat. Flimsy. Just one bat. I feel for you. Well, yeah. I mean, I think one bat. If I get hit by two bats, I could probably die. So. <laughs> Interestingly, oh, Alessandra has higher AC than <laughs> Truffle and Orin. <laughs> Ow! I mean... <laughs> okay. So my, my hit die doesn't seem, doesn't seem to be working. It's kind of like stuck on a D6. Uh, if you... Where it says hit die... It's probably where, it's, where it says the number D8, click on the number, yeah. And it should give you a drop down. Oh, yeah. Nice. I forgot there's music in the background. <laughs> yeah, re re really scenario inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll change the playlist. Yeah, I'll change the playlist. How do, I, how do I listen to it? It's coming through Roll it's 20. Already... I'll roll 20. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hello. Whoa. Ladies. Great. Good job we marked this for mature audiences. Get them ludes on Patreon, boys. Okay, okay. Okay. Whole life with my nudes not going online, and now. So you guys have had your short rest. You're in this large cavern with the this constant whistling wind blowing through. Um, you know, it's sort of like. Your cheeks are probably flush from this constant wind against you, and you have occasionally, you know, you need to try and find cover because it is just it will grate against you. It's quite unpleasant to be in this place. Um, so you finish, you spend like an hour or so resting. Truffle plays his flute. You do your various activities, and it's time to decide what you do next. Panic. Okay, so I. I I stand up and I'm like, right, we need to keep moving, guys. Um, I suggest we head south past the wall I've created and keep going. Um, unless anyone wants to check out the room where we were just attacked. Wasn't there a room full of really interesting mushrooms? So I think it was so down So interesting mushrooms. Yeah. So I said, okay, so would you like to just pop, pop in there and we'll just check if there's anything we've missed? Absolutely. I am going to. Get poisoned. Mm -hmm. Pop in. I'm uh okay. I'm gonna sneak in. Don't worry, I can be really sneaky. It's not a problem. Uh, I'm gonna poke my head into the mysterious you, I, fungal room. Are you proceeding sneakily? <laughs> oh, am I? Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna roll, roll that, that sweet sweet roll that stealth. Uh, that's a twenty-six, my friend. Truffle almost vanishes from this plane of existence. <laughs> a mushroom himself. Yeah, he just poof, um, it's a little mushroom walking along. Ding, ding, ding. So, so, uh, I, as, as, sorry, so as Truffle's moving, and you're like, I'm gonna go in there. I'm like, no, Truffle, wait. But as I turn around, you just is it? He's just gone. Like, you're like, what? I can't see. I can't see. <laughs> Where'd he go? What? He was literally in front of me. <laughs> okay, so uh, Truffle, so you go. I you... shuffle my way yeah. round the corner. I truffle shuffle, if you will, round the corner. And uh, what do I see? What do I see in the uh, truffle room? Truffle has dark vision, right? I, who has dark vision here? I can't remember what, uh, what the truffle light does. was. Lysander. And Akani and Orin don't, right? No, I've got a torch. And, oh, you had I light. Know. Someone had light, didn't they? Or a torch. I had a light, yeah. which I, I dropped during the fight and I picked back up again. Okay, now. cool. 
Okay, so yeah, L L Truffy, you go into this room. You could see anyway because you your dark vision. But um, there's this sort of like massive. It's like almost on a little mound, and this huge amount of these blue, uh, like bioluminescent fungi. And you can hear the fluttering above you of bats. And you look up, and the ceiling is quite high, like maybe fifteen, twenty feet. And this small, it's like an alcove, uh, and the back end of it sort of like all dug in. Maybe like the bats have made it their nest or something. Um, and you can see that it doesn't, it's just a dead end. Um, all there is is like bats above you and loads of these fungus on this little like mound on the floor. Are the fungi Fungies. within an arm's reach of truffle? I mean, if you moved five feet forwards, they would be. <laughs> <laughs> Come into my den. <laughs> Truffle's gonna move five feet forward to try and enjoy <laughs> just mushrooms. Try and pick up the mushroom. Okay. Tr truffle dies. Okay. You move forwards towards the mushrooms, and you're trying to pick them up. I'm gonna try and pick up a mushroom and okay. put it in my pocket. Okay. You pick up a mushroom and put it in your pocket. Okay. And then I will slowly Homer Simpson a hedge back away <laughs> out of the room you do notice as you pick up that it's like growing out of like a big like a mound of like a different kind of rock like not the rock that everything else is growing on interesting okay I'm going to go back to the group you have one glowing mushroom in your inventory yes right guys you will not believe this. No, where did you come from? <laughs> uh, from over there. So, uh, there's this mushroom. Check it out. That's pretty cool. Right? I, I slap yeah. it. I slap. I, I, I attempt <laughs> to slap it out of his hand. Pull it back. Slight of hand, I guess. P, P, P. <laughs> what, what am I? What am I roll? Slight of hand as well. Um, Joe, roll slight of hand. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Okay. Which roll? Um, roll a dex what am save. I rolling? Roll a dex save. D dex? Dex save? Yeah. And we'll roll. 24. Whoa! Truffle. It's too fast for you. And before you know it, how hands are both held up. No, there is no mushroom in those hands. <laughs> <laughs> and I just see this blue light in his hood. <laughs> no mushroom. Okay, guys, see with your eyes, touch with your hands. That's a mushroom. Look at it. Don't touch it. Am I might truffle? That could be very dangerous, darling. It also could be very important. I will check it later. But did you know there's a room full of them? There's also a room full of bats. So, I mean, if we want to go on a murder rampage, there's lots more than there were out here. But there's a mound full of mushrooms. So, I don't think that's what we're looking for. And it is a dead end. But if someone knows anything about mushrooms, they might want to take a look. Otherwise, I think we should go south. What do you think? I think we should all just take a look at the mushroom and see if we know anything about it or have seen it before. Can do, but I would recommend that everyone goes really, really, really quietly because there are lots of bats flying around, and that ceiling is high, and there's lots of them. And if only I'm good at killing them, you guys don't appear to be as good. That's fine. I'm happy to chip in. But and I give I give Lysander a bit of a look at this stage, like a bit of a sly, kind of worried. Yes. What? Sorry. Mm. Mushrooms. Yes. Uh, we should definitely eat mushrooms. Even mushrooms, and I put one in my mouth. <laughs> you put it in your mouth. Well, I I, I put the tongue, tongue to the tongue to the tip of a mush. Make a Constitution save. Son of a gun, right? You explode. <laughs> constitution saving. Yeah. You instantly get diarrhea. Oh! <laughs> What'd you roll, Chris? Natty oh, one. That is a natty one. A shatty one. <laughs> Oh no. You full on conscious for two hours. <laughs> it's begun. <laughs> Truffle like licks this mushroom and I mean he just goes his eyes his pupils go 
and then he just flops forwards on the floor. Right. Oh. Bat family um, guy style. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps we could uh, saute them? I immediately bend down and I check his pulse and perform, you know, kind of just general first day battlefield checks. Yeah. He doesn't seem to be in danger. He seems just like a, in a very deep sleep sort of thing. He's been drugged. Can I, can I attempt to sneakily take the mushroom? If yes, I'm like I'm trying to like oh dear he's unconscious I'm going to kind of kick it over and try and pick it up. Roll also, sleight of hand. I'm also looking for this mushroom. Oh, ignore. Oh, you're also looking. Twenty-two. For 22. <laughs> <laughs> if you're actively looking, wants. roll a perception. Uh, I don't. I don't care about the mushroom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. You don't. You you're looking for it, but Lysander has already done something, and it's gone. Just sneak, sneak it into the pocket, and just oh dear. Okay, and I'm crawling around on my arm, you know, <clears throat> and I'm just like, where is it? We need to inspect it to know. <clears throat> Kind of figure out what it is. Figure out what this stupid boy well, is taking. While, while this is going on, I'm just like, I'm like crouching down over Truffle, like giving him a little shake and being like, uh, Truffle. He's just like, <laughs> pat, pat him on the face. Just like, like drool coming out the side of his mouth. <laughs> is he okay? What's happening? Is he all right? It would is appear he that dead? he's okay. He's just unconscious, but we don't know how long he's going to be out for. Could be a coma. Um, I, I kind of, from what I've checked, I don't think it is. Um, I'd say somewhere between. Anyone is anyone proficient hours. with my like, understanding? Uh, my understanding of these matters is he's not going to wake up until he gets kissed by some sort of handsome prince, possibly his true love. Are any of you proficient in nature? If so, you can make a roll to try and estimate how long it'll take. No, sir. Don't give a shit about nature. It's too green. Or medicine. Or medicine. I'll allow medicine. Yeah. Proficient in medicine. Yeah. Medicine's for helping other people. I don't care. <laughs> Classic oh, Lysander. I rolled, a, I rolled a 16. Okay, so you are uh, you have a pretty good idea that this is not like a serious thing and it shouldn't last more than a few hours. Okay, so I check his pulse. I'm <clears throat> staying keeping for a little bit. Heartbeat steady. Okay, I can hear his breath. Doesn't seem to be suffering from any sort of fever. Um, I estimate... Yeah, I estimate he's probably going to be out for a couple of hours. We've got to make a decision. Um, I don't know any way to bring him around quicker. We can take him with us. I don't think he's too heavy. Um, and, 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 you know, kind of <coughs> increase our pace. Or we can sacrifice our pace at finding the party we're looking for. And stop, rest, wait for him to wake up. Mm. Or, I, so I mean, he, he's only we. But if we, we get into another fight, in a pocket. if no, we get into another just... fight, we won't be without our, without our star players. How to pad, how away? to pad out your content 101. Have put in stuff that Chris will just randomly try and lick. <laughs> in, in my defense, Lysander did tell me to eat the mushrooms. Uh, um, well, if we encounter anything, Really dreadful. We could always just run away. Oh, Sander, uh, you can't be serious. Why? Oh, you mean bring Truffle with us? Yes. Not leave him here. Not a savage. Um, might as well go away, Chris. You're uh. <laughs> you're, you're unconscious for the rest of the time. Yeah, he's like, oh, <laughs> should have fucking licked that mushroom. <laughs> Fuck. You're out. Should we just play the next two hours in real time? <laughs> Uh, no, just um, two two in-game hours worth of con of uh, combat, where every turn is six seconds. Okay, um, well, let's I'm move gonna, forward. I'm gonna try and saunter over to where the the mushrooms were. Nice under his Get that room full of bats. Yeah, you you see the same thing that Truffle did as uh, like bats lining the ceiling and this little mound with various uh, blue. Uh, bioluminescent mushrooms sprouting out mm. of it. Hmm. Mushrooms that render you unconscious. Oh, Does yes, anybody mind? 
Does anybody mind waiting just a little bit while I try and get some of these for later? They could be useful. That's a they could be plan. useful. I, however, will not be touching them, so please step back. I need to um, ask a, a friend to help. And I sit down and I get a notepad out of my my little worn satchel and I start reading and blah, 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 blah. And I know, drawing stuff and I ritual cast Unseen Servant for 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. And, uh, yeah, a little... Uh, 10 minutes, anyone doing anything for 10 minutes? Or are they just going to watch me? <laughs> I am Occupado. <laughs> Currently out of commission. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, eventually... Um, you don't see anything happen. It's completely invisible, okay. It's completely invisible. Um, but I kind of start pointing and... Yes, yes, the big one. And then the mushroom will snap and pick and float over and drop. I've got hold open my satchel. I'm like, in there, in there, in there. Okay. Thank you. So, so and then I just, I keep doing it and I get like a punnet of mushrooms. So you have a, you have a punnet of mushrooms now. Yeah. After <laughs> okay. a short amount of time. <laughs> Vocabulary. I'm enjoying that word. I'm so, I'm so used to Donny calling me satchel that every time you say it, I'm like, is he talking to me? God, Donald. Right. <laughs> So you've picked several of these mushrooms and this sort of like mound of weird uh, rock and earth is it's just left there and with a few a few mushrooms still poking out of it. Um Yeah, and then once it's done I um yeah, thank you thank you very much dear. Thank you. Off you go. <laughs> Off you go. Right. right. What are we doing? Um so DM, my torch, how long does it last? And is it still going? It's still burning at this point, yeah. Okay. Um, so I've been meditating for the last 10 minutes. Kind of, I crack one eye. I see that kind of the sand is dumb. Orin, what are you doing at this point? Um, What am I doing? I'm just still sort of trying to wake up. One hour is the answer. What? Oh, it's okay. So I torch. see that my torch is, is, is uh, pretty much dead. Uh, I'll strike another one up, and I will pick up Truffle, and put him on my back. In my in my in my case, I've got a big kind of basket full of odds and sods, armor pieces, scrolls, holes. Um, I'm hoping as well for me to breathe. Just yeah, like it's like a it's a wicker. It's wicker, it's wicker. Okay. So nice. uh, I'm gonna pop pop him in. Okay. Cool. Okay, hoist like my umbrella. A travel, like a travel basket. <laughs> Brilliant. <coughs> Got my torch. It's like a, it's like a papoose. <laughs> so, right, guys, what are you doing? Let's uh, action time. Let's go. <laughs> Let's head south. So you're heading south. And you've got like a five foot space where this wall is, uh, you know, got a gap between it and the cave wall. And because of this constant wind, it's sort of channeling itself through there. It's quite like a strong breeze as you try and squeeze yourself through this gap. You know, not strong enough that you can't do it, but it, it's suddenly like a, a gust of wind in your face. <coughs> okay, so I, I kind of put one hand up around the torch, and um, I try and just kind of... I'm holding the torch and the umbrella in one hand, and I'm kind of just trying to squeeze through. I'm going first, looking behind over me, uh, Lysander and... Check the light, see if Lysander and Orin are following me. I'm following her. Okay. Okay, so I, I push my way south, um, probably down to about this corner here, and just stick my head around this, the, the side. Okay, cool. So you pass the burrow that the creature made and the, the, the couple of like the exit and the entry points that it made as it was burrowing in and out of the ground. Um, and you peer your head around this uh, corner and you can see that this. Uh, is a corridor that heads eastwards, um, a narrow corridor, into a larger room. Um, can't quite make out at this point what is in there, I would say. Okay, um, i just turn, turn around to the others and I whisper. Does anyone, does anyone want to go ahead and see if there's anything in there? Sneak in, I'm not exactly subtle. Um, <clears throat> I could... Um... I could give it a go. Go for it, 
Lysander. This one's on you. I'm quite nimble. Um, and I would like to proceed very quietly. Okay. You're just proceeding okay. stealthily? I am proceeding stealthily. Like, In fact, I'm you know what? At this point, I would say that the wind is loud enough that you can get advantage on your noisy-based stealth checks. Holy shit. Okay, so I'm going to push... Excuse me. Pardon me. Um, is stealth something I can get guidance on? Yes. It's a skill check, so I... right? Yeah, okay. Um, I just take a second and I'm like... You've got this, you can do this, come on. Come on. 25 plus 2. Okay. Oh, with advantage. Just why the fuck not? 18 plus 4. So that's a 27. Okay. So I proceed. Do, 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 so push through into the cavern. You see now. Lysander that you're in a large chamber so mm -hmm. like straight ahead of you to your left you can see that there is a, a path that's branching off heading northwards but mm -hmm. the, the main chamber here is this big large chamber to the south um, and there is like a strange smell in the air as as you go in here and it's sort of like a an ozone-y sort of strange magical smell um, and from here you can very faintly hear some noises that aren't wind coming from that north passage and the room itself is large and cavernous much like the last one but it doesn't have these like pillars in the middle it's just full on gouged out um, and it is there's like mist but it is hanging on the ceiling Sort of like mm -hmm. as if it was misty or foggy, but upside down on the ceiling. And in amongst this mist, there's various like small glowing, like green and sort of very pale blue, like crystals and gemstones poking out of the rock in the ceiling. And it's like maybe about 30 feet up in the air. And it's it, the, the light coming off of these small crystals is enough to illuminate the room. Like to the extent you don't wouldn't need dark vision in here. Okay. I take a second to really uh, take a look around my surroundings. Yeah, and this is like a w strange, like this is definitely a bizarre kind of phenomenon that no one would have seen before. You guys wouldn't have seen mm. before. Uh, I don't think Lysander's ever been into a. a a mine before. Lysander in particular. Yeah. So I will carefully push forward mm -hmm. and then just kind of creep. I'm trying to stick to the wall as much as possible, but gently creep. And I can see that there's a passage way down south. Yes, correct. It keeps on going south, south, south. There is a passage um, that you can see like right down here. It's heading off. Um, okay, and there's, there's this the constant passage. mist, and it's sort of it's like drifting down the side and almost coming down to like the point where you are, and it's sort of swirling as you move past. It's like um, like dry ice sort of thing as you move past. Mm -hmm. There's this sort of like gust, and the wind, is, the mist sort of curls around. I will. I can see that. I can see this uh, as an opening here, so I just push south a little bit more, and just oh, it's just a little. Mm -hmm. kind of cornery bit so as okay. you're as you're moving through this room and obviously the wind is is constantly coming through and stronger and stronger as you go deeper into this cave the wind is stronger and stronger but it is not the wind isn't the affecting the mist almost like it is not tangible not corporeal kind of thing oh dear. um and you can what's your passive perception no <laughs> yeah dog shit yeah, you. Um, how how would I describe this? Uh, you die. <laughs> it's like it's like there are. Welcome to Dark Souls. It's like there are voices, like constantly talking to you in your head, like very very far away. 
like whispering voices. You can't make out anything they're saying. It's like this constant in the background, at the back of your head as you're in this room. Mm. Don't like that. I um I can't see anything down south. I'll just I'll, I'm going to proceed back slowly again, hugging the wall. Dum -dum -dum, all the way back up to the uh, to the guys. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> and I and I give them the lay of land and I'm like so to the north. It looks like there's a passageway and I can hear noises. Uh, I'm not sure what they are. And uh, to the south, there's another large passage that continues onwards. There's some very strange mist as well. I'm not a mist expert, but it does seem very <laughs> unusual. Um, more. Mist is like a phenomenon that most people will have. It's like a, in a legendary level phenomenon that you guys would have heard of, but know nothing about. <laughs> fuck this, let's go. You're like, I, I, <laughs> this mist crap? What the fuck is this sort of thing? Should we, uh, should we proceed? Should we go north, but basically back on ourselves? Or did you um, see, south? Did you, anything, did you see anything else, Lysander? Uh, no. What's that strange light coming from the room? Oh, there's some crystals, I don't know. This it's is a mine, crystals. isn't it? Yes, crystals. It's a mine, right? We were asked to look for some crystals. Oh, yes, well, there's crystals in there. Glowing. They're in the ceiling, though. I certainly can't reach. <sighs> if I recall, so, that's what the expedition was after, like some kind of crystal. Yeah, the crystals or the, or the source. So our, our quest was to find the expedition, <clears throat> or failing that, the crystals or source. So, we have a bit of a decision to make here. If we just go back with the crystal, we can say we didn't find the expedition. This is getting dangerous, guys. I'm just not sure whether it's worth putting our lives on the line. But what about these people? What about only... these people? We should only proceed as far as we're comfortable that we're going to make it out alive. We've got an unconscious person slash goblin in my backpack. <laughs> <laughs> like Yoda. <laughs> that was okay, not the Yoda easiest. and Luke's backpack. <laughs> that was not the easiest battle I've ever been in, darling. Well, yeah, well, how about this? How about um, I? We could just take a look north and uh, just, you know, see what happens. Oh, I'll even go first. I'll stay really quiet. How about that? This doesn't sound like you, Lysander. I just. I think we need to find these people. I look at Orin like, who is who is this person? Um, okay, I, I kind of stand me? up. That's Lysander. <laughs> yeah. I'm Lysander. Remember? Are you okay? Is your head alright? Is your head alright, Lysander? Yes, I got hit in the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, so I stand up, I crack. I cut my hands, re-pick up my umbrella. Let's um. Let's proceed. I'll poke my head to the north, and I'll um. I'll just pop back, but just keep keep close. Okay, so before you guys proceed, do you want to take a quick five-minute break here, since we're about halfway through? I'd love. Yeah. Little... Well, seeing as my character is unconscious, why not? Okay. All right. <laughs> Rendezvous <laughs> in. Five minutes. Yeah. You have no one to blame but yourself. Don't lick. Don't lick random guy. stuff. <laughs> I mean, yeah.
Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got a bit of an echo back, but wait, not yeah. outputting on, on Discord. So mute on Discord. We're just. I don't know. Just troubleshooting a couple of audio issues. Anybody who's so there? we should just be live in Discord. Discord only, right? Apparently, there's yeah, been some roll twenty. Some word that still could go higher. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, I mean, my Tuesday, Discord Tuesday, is Tuesday. very low, so I can crank that up just a tiny bit here. I am only broadcasting on Discord. I am also only broadcasting on Discord and on my um, my sex cam channel as well. Is that ba Selini? Is that is that better? I've cranked up a little bit further. Test test one two. Test, yeah, test. I can hear myself. Like yeah, it's not... okay. That's very strange. It's not like super invasive, but it is enough to notice, isn't it? Occasionally, I like talking. I'm like, blah, 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 and it like catches me off. But we'll figure it out. Oh, I'd love a pizza right now. Just a hot czar. To to sit back, stuff. relax. Okay. Um... Celine's got pizza. That's what I want to know. Are we are we talking Papa John's? We're talking Domino's? Are we talking the hut? Have you hit the hut? This is a controversial issue now. We're we'll getting into. It is a controversial issue. Personally, I'm a fan of the hut, but then again, I did work there, so it's a bit unfair. Please stop. Please stop messaging me. Please stop messaging me. <laughs> I need to put that oh, on no. mute. Right. There are okay. no pizzas in fantasy land. Or are there? So, Maybe we could learn. We're back in the game. You guys have just... Uh, Truffle is unconscious after licking a mushroom, being carried by a canne in her little knapsack thing. Uh, Lysander has scouted ahead sneakily, investigating a large misty chamber. Um, and now you are proceeding through into this area, I believe. So, yes. Uh, you guys go ahead and tell me what you're doing. So... Uh, Lysander is going to slide, slide, slide along the wall. Try and poke his little head up this northern corridor. See what you can see? So, <clears throat> let me just uh, double check something. Ah. Oh. Ah. Let me just double check what I put in there for you guys. <laughs> let me just double check that I actually put in the lighting kind of correctly. Monster. That's one, two, three, four trasks. Okay, perfect. Um, so I, yeah, I'm going to... Okay, gonna... okay, sorry. Uh, so you go through and you see there is a short corridor, maybe about 20 feet heading northwards. It's quite narrow at the end, and you can see there's like a large, at the end of the corridor, like wooden, like oaken door, thick oaken door. Um, it looks kind of uh, like a bit old and decrepit, and there's a, like a big iron old school handle, uh, door handle on it. Okay, so I, I just kind of look back at whoever's there. I'm just like, come on, hand gesture. Like, I, I, as... I, I can't I hear, I, I see kind of you gesturing and, and I make my way towards you. Kind of, I wouldn't say stealthily because I'm a bit too clunky for that and I've got a goblin in my backpack. Um, <laughs> so Is that a like, goblin in your backpack or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> just happy to see you, baby. Okay. Uh, I'll wait for everyone to kind of be near, and then I'll just... Seeing Arcane's uh, hand gestures last time, I'm going to attempt to do some. I'm like... Smile. And, uh, and, 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 you know, kind yeah. of being in the military kind of for the last 30 years, I have no idea what you've just done. <laughs> <You're> basically, <laughs> like, someone's just spoken to you and gone... Blah, 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 blah. It's like Mr. Burns when he's doing the secret <laughs> gesture to Homer in the baseball. Yeah, <laughs> If I do this, don't do this. And if I do this, then cancel the last request. <laughs> so I um I just proceed onwards. Awesome. Uh, okay. So you you're, you're still stealthy from before, so you don't need to roll any of that stuff. And I I just whisper back, it's tight. Yeah. Oh come on. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> okay. And I get is this the this is the door then? Yes, so that is the it's like a large Probably about eight foot high, like oak door that's sort of like 
been sort of sawn off at the edges so that it just fits into this gap, this sort of cavernous gap. Um, and it looks jammed quite tight and there's this big, heavy oaken handle. Looks like, um, you know, like it'd be quite hard to move. Quite mm. a big, heavy door. Um, you can, you can door. just no, no. faintly <laughs> make out the sounds of voices, like muffled voices behind the door. So I, I slink back to it and I'm like, beckon everyone over. Come hither. I walk over, but as I walk over as well, I'm looking looking towards the ceiling, and I can see crystals, right? Yeah, so in the large chamber, there's, like, mist, this, like, ethereal mist, like, roiling around the ceiling, this constant wind pummeling through the actual room, and, and on the ceiling, it's dotted with these sort of gemstones, like, jades, sort of gemstones, like, glowing green and pale, very pale turquoise, in the ceiling and it's enough to illuminate that you don't need your torch to see in that in that room in particular okay and you can <laughs> hear like... the same thing that lysander hears as everyone passes through there you can hear like a very very faint whispering in your head like like not in your ears sort of thing okay so i'm kind of like ooh, ooh, i feel kind of a bit of shiver down my spine um, and I approach Lysander. Like, what, what have we got? There's a door, a big one, and I can hear voices. Do you think it's the expedition, of which we know nothing about them? <laughs> um, I, I, um, I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, perhaps you, you could go and take a listen. I couldn't hear anything. Okay, so. Uh... Excuse me. I, I, I stealthily. Oh, I put down my backpack with with our goblin truffle in it. <laughs> okay. And I, uh, I stealthily um, try to approach the door. Oh. Fifteen. That's all right. It's pretty good. Okay. So I just approach the door. What'd you roll? Fifteen. Uh, fif fifteen. Okay. Um, and I put my ear to the. I'm looking at this door. Is there any keyholes or, or gaps? Yeah, or yeah. There is a, like a big, like a sort of like, you know, where it's got like a handle and like a panel with a keyhole in it, sort of big iron thing. Um, and it's a big. Like, it's like it looks like it have a big clunky key. Um, yeah. So you you're listening at the door, are you? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so been about door, been about I'm ten hoping, minutes. Chris. Okay, and I'm kind of looking through the keyhole. Okay, so you um, you can't really, it's all rusty and mucky, you can't really make out much through the keyhole, but if you listen at the door, you can hear voices, um, one that's sort of like, and one that's sort of higher, like, and they're sort of, they sound like they're having some kind of heated conversation. Okay. <laughs> so I, I head back, kind of creep back along the walls, watching out my big umbrella. Um, yeah. But I, I speak to speak to the, speak to the team. So but this is the situation. We've got a door there. We don't know who's behind it. Um, they sound like they're having an argument. There was one kind of this high high pitched voice. It's like meh, 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 meh. and this other one was like bruh, 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 bruh. and um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. essentially they could be allies. Um, who are locked away or who know this place well, or they could be they could be bad bad folk. Um, you know, kind of our options are to go through the door or to keep going south. We could um, we could knock on the door. It's always good to be polite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good idea. Oh, yeah, that's right. We don't have trouble with us. He's he's asleep. We need could to you uh, could you determine the language being spoken? Uh, I think back to the conversation. I wonder whether it is uh, any of the languages that I might have heard in the market. Has I'm anyone got any magic that might help truffle? <laughs> Has any got no. anyone got anything like restorative or healing? No. <laughs> okay. Never mind. I think he's our only healer. We've hey, really we've crafted this party well. <laughs> if he's coming of age or is getting married, then I'm your man. I've got a ceremony. 
I can. <laughs> Why have you got ceremony? Hey, man. <laughs> okay. 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 We're so, so, now. but, so, what are you exactly doing right now? So, what was your question, Joe? Sorry. So, my options to the team were. Oh, so do I reckon I recognise the language? Have, have, have I heard these? It was common. They were speaking common. They're speaking common. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't hear the words, right? Yeah, it's just because it was muffled through the big door and it's windy and you couldn't really make out what they were saying so, too well. Okay, um, so I have no idea kind of whether they bear us ill intent or not. Um, we can knock on the door and I'm quite happy to deal with whatever, whatever's behind there or we can take the safer route, perceived safer route and just explore south a little bit, maybe give Truffle a bit longer to, to wake up or we can rest, you know, is the other option. I don't think he's going to be out for much longer um, and, uh, and then proceed with him. There are our options, mm. folks. What do we do? Well, hmm. If it's the expedition, hmm. we can't guarantee it's the expedition. If there's a fight, we're going to be trouble. Yes, but if they're arguing, it seems like there's some kind of pressing matter. If we sit around waiting for our goblin friend to wake up, who knows what could happen? I like your thinking, Lysander. Orin, <coughs> what do you think? I think, I mean, there's no reason to assume just because we're in a cave that anyone else who's here is gonna gonna be nasty. Okay. I mean, there were some bats and an insect, but if there's other people in here, they might just be hiding, you know? Good point. Why, why does everyone have to be aggressive? <laughs> okay, let's do it. I, I, I think we should leave Truffle, uh, I think we should leave Truffle just around the corner though whilst we go have the conversation. Okay. <laughs> Would you like me to uh, maybe go and knock on the door? I could be quite persuasive if I want to be. Um, I think we should go together, Lysander. Just if it kicks off, I'd like to be there. Okay. <coughs> okay. So what are you guys doing? Uh, so I'm going to go knock on the door. Are you leaving Truffle? Up to the door. We're going to leave my bag and my... Uh, uh, leave my bag in goods there. Uh, okay. I've got my big kind of metal shield slash umbrella. Um, and uh, Truffle, we're leaving you here. It's a good place to be. In a bag, unconscious, in a cave, full of dodgy mist. <laughs> no one checks for back. <laughs> uh, and I just, <clears throat> and I pull up my cane. I've got a pen. And I just, dun 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 dun, on the door. Boop, boop, boop. Oh. Okay. So you bang, bang, bang on the door. And he goes, <laughs> and you hear like the footsteps coming over the door. You get, <laughs> who's there? What's the password? And I look at, <laughs> I look at Akane, and I'm just like. And I'm just like, do your thing, do your thing. <clears throat> the, and I try and put on my best <laughs> big man voice. I don't need to give the fucking password. Hmm? Who's this fella? Got a deep voice, deeper than you. Uh, yes, you know who. Yeah. It's Clive here. Yeah? Okay. Uh, I don't think we know you, so we is going to need to have the password. That's a password. Alright, letting you in. Um, okay. I... Ah, shit. I need to see him for that. Um... <clears throat> Who are you? We have come <laughs> to help. <laughs> I don't know why I'm still putting this voice on. I like we it. We have come to help. Come it. And roll a deception check. Twenty-one oh. plus four. Okay. Well, Twenty-one. Yeah. I didn't. Okay. He successfully. He definitely believes you. What your that you are your voices your actual voice. <laughs> yeah. We have come to help, 
and um, assist. Come to hell? From you know who. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shredding constantly. Yeah. Hell. <laughs> yeah, well, you. I'm just like. Hey, hey, just wait here a minute, will you? I'm gonna. Hang on. Wait here. Is he on the other side of the door? He's not opened the door yet, I think. No, it. no, the door's still closed. Okay. You hear the footsteps walk away and you hear... We're not expecting anyone! Are you really? Are you with him? Are you with him? Has he sent you over here? He has. And we're wasting time. Mm hmm. I think you're going to have to bugger off, quite frankly. By the sounds of things, we don't want nothing to do with him. We're here, we're out of his way. And that's that. <sighs> And um, I pick up my cane and I'm just roll my eyes at, um, <laughs> at Kane and I say, "Look, I suggest you open the door." And I tap my cane on the ground and cast suggestion. Okay, got some kind of serving throw. That is, ooh, you suggest a course of activity. Um, It doesn't actually say in my... That is charisma thing. saving throw, right? I mean, it would make sense. Suggestion. Maybe two seconds. The target must make a wisdom saving throw. There you go. Wisdom saving throw. Wisdom. And it's... DC is... 15. Oh, you can see within range. Can't see it. Um... I would say that because of that, he would get advantage. Okay. But his highest roll was 11. Hey! So, he is... Your, six, your spell goes off successfully, so what are you suggesting? I suggest that he opens the door. Opens the door, opens the door. And is it obvious that he's mm. made a spell at this point? Like, has anyone else, could, could I notice that he's cast a spell? I mean, what would it look like when you're doing suggestion? Other than just so, saying things. Technically, this is cast via my, um, my cane. My, um, cane of conviction. Ah, so you have to t t tap it on so the I, floor. I, yeah, I, t I yeah, tap it on the floor. So it's just a double tap and that's it. So you wouldn't necessarily think there was anything funny going on. He's just tapping his uh, cane to punctuate his speech. So it's verbal and somatic, and the verbal component is the suggestion, and the somatic. The sorry, verbal and material, and the material is the yeah. Focus. The the only thing that you need to do is verbal, and everything else is yeah. Okay. Um, so, so I'm looking at him like that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> if we try everything, he's not going to open the door. I'm just I just look back and I'm just like. It, it's fine. I've got this. Don't worry. And Lysander's like, just, just. just and then there's this sort of, you hear, <laughs> sort of grumbling to himself. And then you hear the sort of rattle of this jangling of iron keys. And then the handle turns and this big door, he like heaves it. It sort of like squeaks against the thing and they sort of like yanks open. It comes open with a slam. And uh, you see inside this room, I shall just remove that lighting. Um, you see, if I can actually select things that I want to select, you see two goblins. Goblins! <laughs> one of which is the one who just opened the door, um, who will be over here. And he's just like. A regular looking goblin. He's wearing filthy, ragged clothes. He's got like a little, like, rusty scimitar in his waist. Um, his hair is like lank and greasy. He's got a big, warty nose. And the other one is sitting at the table, which they were sitting at before. And there's like cards and coins all over the table. And like a little, like, melted down, half burned out candle. Um, 
and he's sitting there and he's got like a floppy pointed wizard's hat and like a ragged old wizard's robe and like a little knobbly staff like the most pathetic looking wizard's outfit you've ever seen <laughs> cosplay wizard oh, yeah <laughs> and he turns over he's like uh what are you doing and the little guy who opened the door is just like uh opening the door what why did i open the door again who are you who are these fellas i don't know these fellas um... I, I guess i've just stood there like um didn't expect goblins um <clears throat> i look at a carne like I so I, I i i i turned back and whispered at orin i'm like honey go get my backpack make sure it's got truffle in it bring it into the room I stick my uh, I stick my umbrella, my big kind of shield, just by the door, just to kind of keep it open. And I walk in like, oh, it's about time you let us in, um, you know, kind of. Uh, and I'm I'm trying to kind of act like I am just spinning a story, but it's clearly just junk. I don't know what I'm doing. I just walk into the room with confidence and to start talking about the fact that we are here because um, our friend is injured. Our friend is injured, and we needed some help. So the guy who opened the door is kind of, he's sort of confused. He's like, what, what, you know, why did I do that? What, door? What's going on? And the other guy's just looking kind of miffed, like they were in the middle of a card game and he was about to win in a hand. And he's like, <laughs> get over here sort of thing. I want to carry on playing. Um, and they don't seem particularly bothered by your presence, but they're more annoyed. Um, I at this point I come back with uh, truffle, not the backpack, just truffle. Uh, <laughs> like carrying him like a football, no, like uh, carrying him like a baby, like fireman's carry over the shoulder. Oh, <laughs> he, he looks over and he sees the <laughs> sees this goblin figure and he's like, oh, I don't know these big ones, but is that one? Of, hey, eh. No, Nuffle, come over here. Is that is that one of ours? And the one of the wizards, shabby wizard's clothes, sort of plops off his stool and pat, 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 patters over to the door and he's like, peers his head round, looks at Truffle on Lauren's shoulder. Uh, I had to get a better look at him, but I don't think we got anyone out at the moment, do we? Uh, yeah, I don't, my memory's not so good. Maybe we should ask the boss. So I, I lift them up off my shoulder so they can see better, but I keep I keep moving them around a bit. You're just like holding truffle up like a... <laughs> so they can't get a good look. I'll, um, I'll like interject with Rook, still putting on the deep voice because now I'm in, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in too deep. Rook, are you going to help him or not? Uh, what do you expect us to do with bloody goblins? He's, is he dead? The mushroom. Ah, he ate a mushroom. Yeah, oh, you didn't the eat the blue. Did he eat the blue one? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, did you? You hear that, Noff? He ate the blue one. Never eat the blue ones. Never eat the blue ones. Been there, <laughs> been there myself. It's on the toilet. Oh, toilet all the following morning. <laughs> and I'm walking around the room at this point saying, these medical facilities are disgusting. The boss said we would we would have medical care if we came here. Noffle, did you say your name was? This is Truffle. Truffle is clearly injured. We need some medical care for him. Listen, I don't know what you're expecting, but this is no hospital medical facility. This is just our little hidey hole, right? You, you see, you seem to know about the mushrooms. Yeah, we've been around here for a few months now. Can you? you just got any tips on on how to re how to reverse this mushroom and cheese coma? Uh, sleep it off is my advice. Unless you got any kind of special potions or magics that can get rid of it. We don't have anything like that. We whenever someone goes off and eats some random mushroom, they have to any sleep kind it of off. Wizard, are you, Nuffle? Um. A crap one. Any chance uh, you've got somewhere we can just just put them down for a for a snooze? 
Noffle like holds his little knobbly stick up and he tries to like summon a flame up. And there's like a little tiny, like a lighter size flame at the end of it. And he's like, uh, uh, and then it just fizzles out. And he's like, yeah, crappy wizard. <laughs> um, I mean, if you want to bring him in here and he's goblin kind, and we seem, I feel like, you know, what, what do you reckon? Yeah, yeah. Well, goblins are goblins. So, well, I mean, you can look after him, you know, but we ain't got any special facilities. So, uh, no, you can bring him in. Um, so at this point, I just kind of, I say, look, we should probably close the door. And I run back and grab my bag, which I noticed Orin isn't carrying. Um, <laughs> it was heavy. <laughs> and I kind of I bring it back in and I kind of dump it by the door. And I try to close the door. Um, well, actually, you might do that without any problem. Yeah. So you're all coming into this little, like, uh, yeah. I guess it's sort of like a watch room where they're sort of sitting there watching the door and playing cards and stuff. And then you shut the door behind you. And so once you've shut the door, you can you can still hear the wind a bit, but you're no longer feeling it so much in here. Um, it's sort of still, finally. It's almost like a relief to be in a room where it's not windy, even though you've only been in this place for like an hour or two. Um, and so you can I, uh... you can also see now that there is a corridor heading off to the northeast into a much larger room, and you can see from here there are at least a couple more goblins in there. I guess I, I, um... I say uh, we we've put we've put. Uh truffle time for his nap <laughs> i'm just sort of like i see uh so you're playing some cards there do you mind if we uh we join while we wait for our little buddy to wake up huh you're just gonna leave him in here why you take him into the room bloody hell what keep him watch out here we keep him good watch ain't letting nobody well <laughs> actually apart from you guys we're not letting nobody in here Ow. You're doing a fine job. Oh, thank you. You are silver tongue kind of fox. You are. Why? Thank you. <coughs> Anyways, you should go in there, speak to the boss, and maybe speak to Clive, and uh, they can probably help you. We we don't have the smarts in this operation. We just watch the door, to be honest. So talk to us a little bit about this operation, then. Not not for what's going on here. <clears throat> well, it's a gobby kind of operation. We find shiny things and uh, sparkly things. Sometimes even not as shiny things. And we gather them up, we bring them over, and we give them to the boss. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a meagre living, but we do all right. Do you have any competition down here? Well, we didn't until fairly recently when that bloody bugger showed up. Which which bugger? Oh. You haven't met him, I assume. You haven't been down south yet. And at this point, I kind of... <coughs> I've got a, a, a kind of a, a wine skin out of my bag and I've uncorked it and I've had a bit. And, I've passed and the goblins are like... Dreamily, like sniffing. Yeah, and I pass it over. Oh, right. you give them some. Talk to us about this old bugger down south. Oh, that. If you give it, he like takes a little sip out, and he's like, "Well, since you ask so nicely, um, well, I mean, obviously, I mean, what are you doing here? You must know about him if you come down here." No, so kind of a look at Lysander here, clearly kind of he knows I'm not particularly good at, at kind of lying or just being charismatic in any way. Um, kind of like, take the lead from me here. Well, we came down here to Lysander. We came down here to talk to Clive. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, baby. I don't, I don't think... Clive doesn't have many visitors. He's not really the visitor sort of type. You sure you're not here to see boss? Uh, yes. <laughs> That's what we meant. 
Oh, yeah, exactly. You, you folks are very strange, but um, you know, you you seem like nice types, and you, you generous, giving types. And uh, for that oh, reason, I hand, back, I hand my wine skin back back to the back to the goblin. He suggestively raises his eyebrows and then takes a sip and then hands it over to the other guy that he called um, Noffle. And uh, that's the wizard, the wizardy one. And then yeah. Noffle takes a sip and then hands it back to you. And then uh, he, the little guy, he's like, uh, the non-wizardy guy, he's like, well, we have been in this place for, uh, well, I'm not so good with timekeeping, but it's several months. We've been in here using it as a sort of base of operations kind of thing, like a hideout, right? Really cool. Nice. It's a great place, nice. a cave. No one's found us, really. No one comes in here. Um, and then a month, maybe two months ago, this fella, he comes in here and he goes poking around the shiny crystal shinies like. And then he comes all like, he, he, he starts picking a fight with old boss and he whips his ass. And boots us out of our own blooming hideout. And he's claiming this cave like he's the bloody king of the place. Trying Ooh. to boss us around. Acting like we're his slaves. So you know what we did? We came up here and we used this room. And this is ours now. Our own little hideout. And we don't want nothing to do with him. This Who is, is he? Um, says Tell his name. Says so his name's Balian or something. Some kind of old soldier. Bit of a grudge. Mm -hmm. Bit of a chip on his shoulder. Bit of a chip on his shoulder, you know. From the war, like. Human? Um, no, not human. More like us. Human, but a bit green, like. Orc? Sort of. Some way in between the two, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any insignias? Uh, Noffle. What's an insignia? Any uh, shapes? Shapes? Flag. Any, anything on his armour or any identifying marks? Noffle. Any identifying marks? Oh, my goodness me. Uh, I think he was a uh, uh, soldier like. <laughs> What, a Galinar soldier. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. And he took the crystals and did he, did you say transform? Well, 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 he... well. We, we don't touch the crystals. The crystals are dangerous, right? We know that. We've been here long enough. We don't course. touch the crystals. What do the crystals do? They're full of magic. Some kind of magic. When you touch them, then it's going to do, it's going to zap you, basically. We found it out the hard way. We tested it. <laughs> one gobby tested it and he got zapped. So we sent another one in just to check and he got zapped. So he sent a third one in just to be really sure and he got zapped. So we're pretty sure that if you touch them, you get zapped. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So he touched them, I think, but he's not zapped dead yet, at least. He's still walking. So, I don't know. Anyways. Do you think the zap would be enough to wake up our uh, our companion? It would be at very least enough to wake up your companion, if not far more than that, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, just one more question before we go see your boss, then. I guess... Um, you're getting quite a lot of visitors down here. This Balian sounds like one of them. Have you seen any more visitors? Oh, no. We, we don't really get... Apart from him, we try and keep a low profile. It helps with the image, you know, if people don't see the image, right? Mm. Especially when we're going around to people's places and we're pinching their stuff. I mean, we're re appropriating funds. Um, it helps helps if we is low profile. So you're stealing, you're stealing from people outside of this cave. Listen, lady, I would let you got <laughs> wonderful hair, but you got to understand, us gobbies live the gobby life. Let 
We don't want no trouble. We've just come to find uh, find find some people uh, that have gone missing down here. In oh, fact, we probably take them out your hair. That's fine by us, so long as... I mean, if you can deal with that old bugger, get him out of here, hoof him out of this cave, and we will be eternally grateful. Uh, I'll look at Akane and Oren, just be like, maybe we should talk to the boss. Yeah, I think so. Taking my kind of wine skin <laughs> off of Nuffle, like... It's like... I burp back him. <laughs> he looks very pleased, like, yes. I like these people. So, um, I gesture to Akane and Oren, and I'm like, after you. Um, I pick up my bag. <laughs> uh, I, I, I go. Up this way, right? I pick up Truffle as well. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'll follow Orin into into the. You're heading door into the, uh, the main. Okay, so you, you so head in months. there. <laughs> if, uh, whatever marching order. They don't seem hostile. Nobody in here seems hostile, especially uh, those two, Nuffle and Gorp. Um, and you go in, and you see in the larger chamber, there's like um, a few dotted around some similar like glowing mushrooms, maybe not the same ones, but a similar sort of thing, sort of glowing and illuminating the room. And there's a couple of like uh, rock pools with like some gently tinkling water. Um, there's a goblin who's like got a little fishing rod with like a little basket and he's like trying to catch crabs out of one of them. And, like he keeps almost getting one and then like grabbing him with his hand and trying to get one. Um, and there's a few other goblins just sort of sitting around picking their nose and scratching their bum. Uh, there is a bugbear on the north side of the room sitting down with a book and like a little pair of very small like Morpheus sized spectacles on his nose <laughs> um, reading a book. And there is on the west side sitting down with a bunch of like equipment and chests and stuff behind him sitting on like a ramshackle sort of chair is a hobgoblin uh, sort of looking just very relaxed and he sees you and he perks up and he's like huh? who are you who are you what are you doing here what a... hey hey go up what are you uh, what a... go up what are these people doing here I, uh, I don't know they they are uh, they, they wanted to see you. I can't remember the voices. I'm getting confused with the voices. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. It's lovely. Uh, what, are, what are you people doing in my home here? He sort, of, he sort of reclined on this chair, but he sort of perked up a bit like... And so he's he's obviously to... like armoured and like bigger muscly and like he's not like a goblin. He's more like a person size and, you know, looking quite intimidating. So I think at this at this point, kind of, I say I picked up that the room is not hostile. I think we're okay. I'm feeling pretty comfortable. My heartbeat's kind of calmed down a little bit. Kind of, uh, <clears throat> I kind of go to sort push like a dreadlock out my eye, and as I do it, I kind of elbow in the back of Orin and just kind of gently send her forward in like a <laughs> your turn. <laughs> Cut away. Uh... <laughs> came to see Clive called us to see the bus. There's no Clive! <laughs> the the bugbear who's reading the book pulls down his book and looks like over his spectacles near he's like I did what exactly? <laughs> uh Nuffle and go up uh the uh, you'd want to speak to us. Well, I thought I'd want to speak to you. Uh, we've got, we've got, uh, we've got, you see, our little buddy. Uh, uh, the, our little goblin friend. Mm -hmm. He's, he licks yes. a mushroom. Okay, yes, you should never lick the mushrooms. And, uh, those guys thought you might be able to help us out. 
for a little bit because we've got no idea what the nothing nothing about the mushrooms. Uh, uh right, guys. I think so, Sen has kind of st stood back, just watch, enjoying um, seeing Aaron and Akane just squirm at social interactions. <laughs> like, it's entertaining, like, uh, Clive is, like, totally, like, reclined against the rock, just looking at his book, like, uh, perhaps he should rest, if you thought about letting him rest a while. And then pulls his book up and goes back to reading. I, I guess we should let him rest a while. And, yeah. and, and the hobgoblin's like, oh, wait, what are you bringing there? Who is this goblin? Is he one of my... I don't think I've seen him before. So I, I kind of I, I kind of look at Orion the Tenth and I put my hand on her shoulder and I kind of just be like, that's that's okay, that's enough. Um, <laughs> and I step forward and I'm like, you must be boss. Um, yes. This is our French ruffle. I'm the boss England. around here. Excellent. Well, look, we don't mean any... any any ill intent we've come mm -hmm. down here looking for um a party uh a friend of a friend of ours we don't know them directly um we heard from noffle that you've got a bit of trouble with this this guy called balian balian mm. um, yeah that's right and we're just looking we're just looking for our friends obviously we your friends huh mm. our friends yeah we wouldn't mind staying here just a little bit kind mm. of while our friend truffle recovers um our dear dear friend truffle Okay. He respects us, okay. and we respect him, <laughs> goblin, and his goblin kind. You try, um, you try dunking him in the pool, it's kind of cold in there. Dunk him in the pool, and it'll wake him right up. <laughs> it's a good idea. I go and pick up Truffle and, and dunk him. <laughs> okay, you die, tr duffle on dunk Truffle head first into this pool. Poor and Truffle, you you like, and you feel <laughs> consciousness coming back to you at the same time as water is filling your mouth. I I pull him out. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Morning, Truff. See, I told you. The water's... Uh, it's not the first time I've had a goblin lick a mushroom around here. This guy knows. This guy knows. Uh, I know about it. I know about it. Why are we surrounded by goblins? Oh, hey there, buddy. You one of mine? I don't think I've seen you before. I've never seen one of you before. You've never seen one of me before? You just want to no. one of us, right? Uh... Yeah. Why no, is he I'm so confused? Hey, you guys, who who are you guys? Come on, talk to me. Hi, I'm Truffle, and um, Truffle, what do you want to huh? know? That's a good name, yeah. Truffle. Yeah. It's a good uh, name. I, uh -huh. I I don't know where it came from. What about you, Legs? The points are Lysander. You, who's you? Legs. Um, I am Lysander Linden. Mm -hmm. yeah. At your service. That's a very fancy about... name. What about I'm you, a Red? Fancy man. Hmm? Red, old lady, who's the use? Why are you coming to my house and not introduce yourselves? Sorry, boss. My name is Arcane. Um, kind of the mum of the group. Uh, like I said, we're just here mm -hmm. to find our find our friend. Um, but I hear you've got a bit of a problem going on. He pulls out like a cigar as you're talking to him, mm -hmm. and just starts lighting it with like a. Some kind of flint and whatever. Can you join our party? <laughs> Please. <laughs> what, uh, what's, uh, Akane, huh? He was one of them, uh, fancy kind of shield peoples, huh? Yeah, have you heard about us? Well, uh, Garlag's been around the block. I've seen a few things, right? Garlag, can I call you that? You can call me Garlag. I prefer if you call me the boss, though. All right, the boss. We're comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've been around the block a little bit, and it looks like you have too. Ah, uh, we have an understanding. You and I. Ah, <sighs> we have an understanding. And I get out a piece of straw and I put it in my mouth. <laughs> oh, mamma mia! <laughs> and I get out my little flip box. <laughs> and I strike it, and it goes down in like. He's like, four boys. Get the old lady a chair. We're gonna sit down and we're gonna have a little talk over here. 
a couple of the goblins rush off to the side and pull out some like old chair, rickety chair, and bring it or plop it down next to Garlag. And they're like, okay. hey, hey, oh, hey, hey, hey. So I, uh, I let go of my umbrella. It just falls to the floor. Nice. Take my backpack off, pull a wine skin out, and I make my way over slowly to this guy. I'm still a bit kind of aware. So I think you can just hear the noise of my kind of wooden clogs as I walk through this cave. And I sit down to him with my tiny bit of burnt straw in my mouth. <laughs> and um, I say, look, boss, <laughs> we're not here for any trouble. We're just here to find our friends. Mm -hmm. I hear you've been dealing with some trouble yourself. That's right. We got some, uh, we got some, in a recent past, we've been having some troubles in our hideout. We've been forced back into this place. It's a little smaller. You've been forced to downsize, you know? And I don't like that so much. Uh, this fella, Balian, he kind of kicked us out of our, of our home. And we don't like that. But uh, he's strong. And we don't, we don't have the means. He knows what I'm saying. We don't have the means. That concerns me. I look around and I see you've got, what, a bugbear, five goblins and yourself? And well, I mean, armor. you look at Clive, for example. And Clive looks over his book again, Mark. <laughs> he's not exactly the fighting type he's more uh, of the scholar kind of type you know you see a bugbear you think he's gonna be eating people and uh, bashing their skulls in but uh, he's more of the he likes the books and the scrolls and the rest of these guys as you've seen from uh, go up and nuffle at the door they ain't too, ain't too smart I mean they do what they said told to but uh, you know when it comes to a fight with a guy like Balian, I mean, if you come into contact with him, you'll know what I'm saying. Uh, a little gobby don't stand too much of a chance. Okay, okay. So, look, I'm not sure we can promise that we're going to get rid of Balian for you. We've just come to find our friends. Um, mm -hmm. We've already had some trouble getting in here. We fought down three to five bats and a giant insectoid creature. Oh, yeah, you know those what? guys. Just feeling pretty tired right now is there oh. anything you can do to help us explore this place and find our friends we'll get out of your hair i mean you're welcome to stay here if you need to rest uh we don't have much in the way of supplies but we can offer you a little food if you need something like that um i can maybe tell you a little bit about the cave um like i says we used to live down in the south part of this cave but apart from that um we'll I don't really particularly want to be going out for a fight myself. If you guys want to go and explore, then that's up to you. But uh, I've uh, gone toe to toe with it, Balian, before, and he kicked my butt. So uh, still uh, nursing those wounds. You know what I'm saying? So we're not, not going to ask you to do that. And I think at this point, I pull out my wine skin and pop the cork. Um. So 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 yeah, we've seen a few things since we've been down here. That mist. That was crazy. It's like stuff from the legends. Oh well, yeah, that mist. Huh? It's I had pretty strange. Stuff kind of hanging out in a cave with that stuff hanging over you. It creeps me out. It's I funny. It's, it's not the whole cave, you know. It's only that uh, you, that big room just south of here where you hear the funny voices and the mist. And, uh, it's the only place you find it in here. Um, I don't really understand it. But uh, as long as you get through that place pretty quickly, it ain't going to do nothing to you. It's never hurt any of us, for example, but uh, it's pretty creepy, I'll give you that. So can you talk to us about the rest of the cave? And I pass over my wine skin at this point. To oh the... yeah, now you're talking. <sighs> now you're talking my language. He takes a sizable gulp of your wine skin. Yeah, and, and I look at him like, kind of, I'm okay to start with, and I'm getting a bit kind of anxious as he gets drinks more and more. <laughs> like, no, that's that's mine, that's mine. <laughs> He's like, so, uh, well, obviously you got the room that you've seen with the mist and the uh, little uh, shiny crystals. Like, you see that place. Uh, south of there, you've got a couple of passageways. One heading to the west, uh, one heading to the southeast, and the southeast one is going to take you to where uh, the heart of all those crystally places are um that is the place where if you touch them you're likely to get zapped um 
Now, I don't know if that's the kind of place you want to go, um, but personally, I would steer clear of there if I was used. But uh, that's up to you. Ooh, anyway. why? Um, if you touch the crystal, oh, you were asleep before, weren't you? Yeah, I don't know anything about it. I saw false baths, and that was pretty exciting. And then I looked at mushroom, and then I met you guys. So, and uh, you guys are the first goblin I've ever seen. It's really go exciting. You're a goblin. What's your story? What you doing traveling with these kind of... These well, mooks, these huh? wise guys. These I like the way you talk. You sound cool. Um, these guys are my friends. And I've never really left my town. And I'm an orphan. Um, but mm -hmm. you're the first goblin I've ever met. And that's really exciting. That's what, what is happening. Well, I ain't, ain't no goblin. I'm a hobgoblin. Okay, you just don't confuse me with these little fillers. What does hob mean? It's kind of like uh, the difference between a, a halfling and a human, right? Uh, One's bigger and smarter and stronger. That's me. Right, so I'm the big one. So, if you're big and smart and strong, why, what, what's so scary about this? What's his name? Balian? Balian? Balian, yeah. He? He's got a... Listen, right? He's not only is he some kind of soldier. He was... Presumably, he fought in the war. He's some kind of grizzled veteran, right? He's so a tough guy, kind of guy, but uh, he's also got some kind of, I don't know, some kind of magical powers on his side, uh, which I can't contend with. All I got is my axe, and, uh, I, you know, it ain't gonna, if anything, it's just gonna make things worse. So, quite frankly, if you guys have got magical powers, then maybe you can contend with him. And also, there's multiple of you, and only one of me, and a bunch of basically dead weight. What kind of magic does this uh, person possess? Um, he's got some kind of well. He zapped me with some kind of lightning, right? Out of his axe. He's got a, like he's got himself a pretty big like a battle axe kind of thing, ah, you know. Um, and uh, it had like lightning running down it. And when he hit me, whoa, boy, that thing hurt. Lightning. He's like, oh, still feel it now. Whoa. What are you thinking, Lysander? Hmm? What are you thinking? Oh, just um, interested listening to the story. Wonderful mm -hmm. details. It's like I'm there. Very eloquently well-spoken gentleman over there. And he seems like really un unimpressed with Lysander. He's mm. like, uh, so what the, what's that kind of fellow like you was doing down in a place like this? Uh, mucking down with a hobgoblin and this crew. Shouldn't he be up in the city with someone shining your shoes and whatnot? Yes, probably. But I'm here. Well, that is very interesting. It is. Isn't it? Mmm. 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 <sighs> so, what do you use, uh, what are these guys, uh, what are you gonna do? Huh? You wanna stay here for the night, or will you hang out and eat some food? For the night? Well, I mean, it's not night time yet. I I'm looking at my watch, like, he has a watch. He does not watch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, so you guys traveled from morning it took you six hours you've been here for a couple of hours so it's like early evening at this point like five o'clock maybe so, so boss talk to us about the, the west passage so if we if we come out this this room here and we head south mm -hmm. what's west oh yeah so uh if you head west which you can also get to from the south passage it curls around but you can go straight west and that takes you into the main like hideout and we used to live um that's like a really big open chamber with like a raised area at the back where we used to like pitch our tents and whatnot and uh it's like a little water spring and it's kind of not dissimilar to this place but a lot bigger basically um and that's where Balian is now is it and that's where Balian is now um and oh by the way I, i'm sure you've noticed the winds in this place right obviously that's yes <coughs> that's coming from the crystal the room with the crystals the crystals are making the wind. I don't know what the hell's going on, right? This is strange. But you go up to the crystals, and it's like the wind is stronger the closer you get. 
So oh, yeah, in that room, it was always more windy. So it's actually kind of nice here because it's less windy. But it's kind of cramped with these guys around me, you know. Uh, I think we should press on. I don't think bedding down for the night is wise. Mm. I agree. Well, you're more than welcome to come back here as so long as you don't cause no trouble. You know, you, Akane, you seem like good folk. Lysander, you're a weird kind of fellow, but, you know, you seem like you don't do no harm. And Truffle, you goblin. And Red, you know, I don't know what you're doing here, but you seem like all right. And I kind of uh, just put my hand on his shoulder. <laughs> Thanks, boss. Yeah. I hope you'll be back. Yeah, he likes it when you call him boss. You can see it in his eyes. He's like, yeah. yeah I know. He's like, yeah. Yeah, I can, I, yeah, I can now, because I can yeah. see his eyes light itself. I'm just kind of... Okay, um, so I kind of summon everyone over. And uh, I guess I address, address, address the group. Lysander, Truffle, Orin. I'm, um, I'm not sleeping here. <laughs> that's not what I was going to ask. Good, because I'm not sleeping here. Who's got my mushroom? <laughs> okay, guys, focus up. Focus up. <laughs> Yeah. So what have what we just learned, right? We've learned two things. A, Balian is there and he's down south to the, uh, to the west. And there's also this room full of crystals, which we think the expedition was coming down here to check out, which are the source of the wind that we're hearing. My suggestion is that we check out the crystal room, see if we can find, find our party. I don't want to be here any longer than we need to. And personally, I'll lean in. I don't necessarily want to get involved in, in this situation between Boss and Balian. I mean, if we get caught up in it, we get caught up on it, but <clears throat> it feels like unnecessary danger and risk to the party. Mm. Danger and risk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the worst D&D player ever. I'm like, let's just stay in town and drink. <laughs> yeah. Well, hmm, it seems like Balian might be unavoidable. And potentially, there might be something we could leverage over this hot goblin fellow. Orin, Orin's eyes are lit up at the prospect of uh, having to having to deal with this uh, this big threat. She's uh, she's up for the challenge. She's like, I think, I think we should go. I think we should go deal with Balian. Why? Sounds like something that might be fun. Why? I'm not saying we see, should. I'm saying it's if, potentially. If we can. It's potentially unavoidable. And that. That's why. Yes. What, what do we get if we do it, though? If you exactly, if you're good at doing something, you should do it for free. I heard that somewhere. <laughs> It was me who said it. <laughs> so maybe we should try and... Uh, we're doing these goblins a uh, big favour. We're doing this by getting rid of this Balian. If we do, if we encounter him, of course. If not, then nothing nothing lost. I'll ask, shall I? I think Akane seems to have the best rapport with him. And um, <laughs> I've... Guys, I'm feeling massively up. uncomfortable by this. <laughs> you gotta, these, these guys are just living down here. Um, yeah, yeah, but they're more what? like me. And But we talked about how everybody deserves a chance to just be free and be themselves. And you said, don't judge a book by its cover. And you seem to be making assumptions about what these people are. Shouldn't we help them? Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You're extremely wise for your 90s. You're <laughs> so, you're so <laughs> wise, like, you're some kind of wise bard. I'm an adult. I, uh, I agree. No, no, but this is it. The words we were using is that we were going to go out there to fight Balian and use it as leverage. Why do we bot? need to fight him? Maybe we could just ask him to. There are two okay. sides to every story. So what are, we, what are we suggesting? We speak to Boss and see if there's anything he would give us if we encounter Balian and we get rid of him. Yes. Yeah. Risk and reward. And so I just kind of like, <sighs> just kind of pinch I, my nose, nose I here. Touch, I touch Akane's shoulder and I'm just like, I believe in you. You can do this. And I cast Guidance on her. What, is, what does Guidance do? So it gives you an extra D4 to a skill check. Okay. 
I don't know what you're skilling, but it'd be interesting. Yeah. I'm debating whether I want to... Uh, no, I'll keep... Wait. So I, I, I walk up to no. Boss, and I say, Hey, Boss, yeah. we've, just, we've just spoken um, together as a group. Really appreciate the offer to let us stay. That's very, uh, yeah, very kind. Yeah, of course. I'm a generous kind of boss. You know that. And I can see that. Um, you know, and you just look like you'd be good fun. Um, however... Uh, what I'm suggesting is we, we, we head south. Um, we're going to go try and find our friends. Okay. But if we do run into Balian, we might have the capabilities to, uh, say, get rid of him. Um, okay. Okay. What would that be worth to you? Oh, I see. You Now you're talking my language, Akane. I like what you're saying here. Okay, so... you, If... Hypothetically, you was gonna deal with Balian. Hypothetically, what would I be willing to give you? Well, I do have some money saved away for our rainy day, so to speak, and I could be willing to part with some of it. How much? Hmm. How much? That's a good question. <laughs> Let me consult my notes here. <laughs> Let me just consult my spreadsheet. <laughs> Clive looks up from his Excel spreadsheet. Yes. Classic Clive. Oh, it'd just be something up. like maybe uh, 100 gold or so, maybe. 100 gold pieces. Works for me. Um, I tell More or less. I'm, yeah. I'm, my eyebrows are going up. And I'm like, Roll my eyes. Fine. So I walk back over, um, and I'm like, he's offering us a hundred gold, more or less, if we find Balian, and are able to convince him to leave this cave <laughs> through forfeiting his life <laughs> or other means. Yeah, it's better than nothing. Mm. <laughs> Truffle. Um, what do you want to do? Just ask him. I'd be okay with that. I don't want to kill anyone. All right. He had me at 100 gold. <laughs> All right, darling. I think we had you at Kill Balian. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just rough him up. Red, I like you. I like Red. She like seems like a simple sword. Like she likes to get things done. Yeah, we still need to talk about that <laughs> another point, Orin. Um, so, don't forget our primary mission here, folks. Find the crystals. <laughs> Find the dealer. Who <laughs> 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 well, wants to say that you can't do both kind of simultaneously, huh? I mean, the crystals are right. They're pretty close to where Balian is, you know. Maybe if you go in there, he'd end up trying to attack you anyway, so... Exactly, exactly. We were going to do it. Why does it feel like everybody wants to go and pick a fight with somebody who has defeated a hobgoblin, six goblins, and a bugbear? Listen, right? It's a dangerous place. You just come in here, surely you're expecting something dangerous, right? Okay, okay. So, how about this? I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just going to sit back. So, it feels like I'm losing a fight here. Why don't we head down the southeast passage out the back of here? We'll go find a crystal. We'll gently take some apart, put them in our bag so we can take them back, look for evidence of the crew. And if we can't, we will follow it through to Balian's chamber and have a conversation with him. And hopefully he'll be up for <coughs> exchanging information um, with us. And we might be able to ask him, Truffle, to leave. Failing that, Red, sorry, Orin, you can use your blood magic to wipe him off the face of the planet. Uh, don't know what you're talking about there. Uh, just, you can't just make stuff up like that. Uh, um, my eyebrows peel. <laughs> Old lady seems like she's got a rational plan, huh? I mean, counter offer. You... We go straight to Balian. We see what he's got going on. If he wants to fight, he wants to fight. If we see the guys were supposed to be finding on the way. 
How about, about this? Me. You guys do a persuasion roll against each other. <laughs> <laughs> I lay out I... <laughs> what I think the plan is, and I go into rich, rich detail. Really rich we... detail. Oh, what? <laughs> 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 so you rolled a three. Um, oh, I feel so I, oh my god! <laughs> the front door. I whisper to Orin. Okay. I'm like, they I'm can't decide. Lysander and Truffle, what do you say at this point? I say Truffle oh feels that he's on his first mission and doesn't want to screw it up. <laughs> he's already licked a mushroom and fallen asleep for two hours. So therefore. Truffle feels we should go to the heart of power, crystal style. That is Truffle's feeling, and do you want me to roll for it? Okay, Lysander, what, what do you think? So Lysander is thinking, well, I won't say what Lysander's thinking, but Lysander... Well, we're on the way to the crystals, anyway. If we encounter Balin, then we'll just have a quick chat, see if we can convince him to leave. We're not there to pick a fight. We're just there to... We, we know why we're here. We're here to find some people and save them, get them out. And I lean to I lean to Orin and whisper to her, and what happens if Balian wants to pay a larger price to remove the Hobgoblin? Ooh. Orin is, mm. Orin is toying here. She needs so, the money better. So as far as you guys all collectively feel it feels like you want to first go to the crystals right yes it seems like it's like kind of like three against one at this point yeah. and i lean into akana and say they seem to be whispering so i'm also gonna whisper again. i don't know what we're whispering about <laughs> <laughs> and i have no idea what's going on i'm still kind of trying to describe my plan in rich detail like drawing markings on the ground and kind of do pros and cons lists and i just kind of like oh Notice Truffle's there. I'm like, sorry, hon, what are, what are they whispering about? I'm whispering because they're whispering. But what so, are they whispering about? I don't know. I'm busy whispering at you. <laughs> so why are we whispering, darling? I don't know. I just it felt left out. Are you two okay over there? <laughs> are you well, okay, Lysander? What are you whispering about? Well, I don't want the hobgoblins here. I don't want... Boston. <laughs> okay, this is pointless. What have we decided? Okay, there? so it sounds I, sounds to I, me like you guys are going to the crystals first, and then going if you the yeah, if you're gonna want to deal with Balian, then that's you know fine, whatever. But you guys better skedaddle because uh, you know you you're taking up space around here. You know, okay. if you want to come back later, skedaddle. you you come and uh, you 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 got just. You know, the guys will let you in. They know you now. Oh, we will. I've never met one of you. This is super exciting. Truffle, so, you're welcome here anytime, my friend. You're, you're a little gob an excellent little goblin. You too, sir. Onwards. I don't want to sleep here. Skedaddle. Okay. So okay. you guys head out and uh, go up and off. They open the door and let you out and then go back to their card game. And you. I introduce myself to them as I leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They, they, uh, Hi. yeah, hey, hey, I can't remember what they were now. They were like, hey, and hello. Uh, hello. Yeah, yeah, hi. Right. Yeah, hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Now, uh, I'd better be off so we can lock up the place. Cool. We'll be back later. When we come back, uh, do we need, like, a secret knock or a password or, uh, like, an outfit? Do we need anything to get in? Um, just, just say the password, and they tell you the password. What's the password? <coughs> they tell you the password. <laughs> the password is the password. They tell you the password. <laughs> okay, let's go. Infiltrate okay. the dealers, find the supplies. Find the supplies. <laughs> okay, okay, so, uh, so gonna, you're okay. all heading back to this corridor down here, right? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, so... You... I'm going to uh, kind of, I'll naturally make way to the front unless anybody objects. Oh my god. Yeah, like... that's fine. What's the best part? Hey, 
So I guess as we're walking through this room here, Dungeon Master, I look up at the ceiling. Is, is there any way that I can kind of think logically? Is there any crystals on the side of... Do you know what? No, forget that. I kind of, I, I know we're head towards the heart of it. I just kind of, in my mind, I think actually we'll just go to the. Source yeah, I mean, it's a reasonable thought that anyone would have as they're thinking through this chamber. Like, they're right there. Could I get them somehow? Kind of thing. Yep. But um, you know, it's it's really like thirty thirty five feet up in the air. Unless you have some way of getting up that high, <coughs> it's kind of out of reach. Is um, there a waterfall that I can walk up? <laughs> It is. Uh, it uh, you all get the. <laughs> yeah, you hear the whispering, um, in your in your heads, and um, <clears throat> and as you move through, these strong gusts of wind are blowing through, constantly billowing through, and it's like whipping your clothes against your body. At this point, it's now like a full-on wind in this room. Um, oh wow! And, yeah, and my torch is just going crazy, right? In my hand, it's just like flaring. yes, <laughs> definitely, like almost to the point okay, that it's yeah. almost being put out by the wind. Oh wow! Okay. Um, and Am I having trouble walking? <laughs> not quite that bad. Um, okay. And as you ch go further into room, it's almost like the mists are like swirling around you, and they're coalescing into like shapes, and like. Some of them are like into like humanoid shapes. Like there's like shadows of people that start to walk around you and they're like the whispering grows louder as you grow deeper into this chamber. And the these you're like you're walking through and it's like the mist are like coming down towards you. And you have to like crouch and they're like reaching out these weird like misty bodies and the the whispering grows louder. Um, and it seems like it's almost about to envelop you. There's mist where it was before, just like a five foot on like fog on the roof, is now filling the room. And it feels like it's about to completely cover you. And from the crystals and from the room to the south, these arcs of lightning <laughs> spread through the mist, suddenly crackle through the whole room all around you in this wave of like magical energy and the mists just like <laughs> go silent and disperse back up to the ceiling. Just hang there thinly, silently. Interesting. I look back over my shoulder. Um, I'm not touching anything. Yeah, and there's like occasionally like a crackle between all these crystals and the thing. There's like a ksh, ksh, occasional like crackles of lightning bolts, sort of thing. Hey, uh, Truffle. Yeah. What do you reckon the crystals taste like? I've learned my lesson. No, this is scary. This is... I don't know what we... like. This is the source of the power, right? This is what they were asking us to find. I think so, Truffle. But... How do we explain this? Like, it's, it's lightning, there's mists, there's people, like... I don't know. Even if we came out of here, I wouldn't be able to explain it. I worry that we're not even at the source yet. But I think we need to keep moving forward. You think it gets worse from this? I couldn't say, but I think we should be prepared for the worst. I, I agree. We, I think we should keep going then. So yeah, now that this room is the mist has sort of dissipated and there's this occasional crackle of lightning tsh, 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 through this room, you, you press on southwards and you see exactly as the boss described, there is a path heading westwards and a path heading southeast <coughs> from your location. Trouble keeps on heading southeast. Trouble keeps heading on. Yep. Okay. So I kind of hold my torch in front of me 
<coughs> kind of what do I notice about the wind? Is it getting stronger, staying the same? It, in, now that you're growing closer to this source of wind, it is strong. It is now at the point that um, you feel like if you went in there, your torch would probably be blown out. And it is full on, like in your face, like as if you like went out in stormy weather and the wind was blowing in your face, sort of thing. You could barely keep your eyes open. That sort of wind. Okay, so I kind of I hold my I hold my torch up and like it goes out. How dark is it? Dark, pitch black. I mean, there's okay. a slight glow in the room behind you and the occasional like flash of lightning. Oh, actually, no. From within that room that you're heading into, there is an a sort of room, room, sort of pale white blue glow, but it's very kind of pulsating. It probably would be if you went in there. You feel like it'd be just enough for you to see. In the corridor, it's pitch black, but you can see up ahead there is like this pale glow. So I put my hand on Truffle's shoulder. Um, I just whisper to him, my torch is done. Well, I have to speak to him, right? It's, it's pretty loud. So my torch is done. I need you to lead the way, Truffle. Okay. Um, should we tie ropes or just keep walking? I think we're okay, hon. I think we just kind of stay close to each other. Okay. So I'm going to keep on walking down. Do you have um, five finger flashbacks. Walking my way downtown. So, You're getting fire finger. You're underground. <laughs> it was the rope. Should we tie each other? Should we tie, <laughs> tie ropes to each other? It's like oh, flashbacks. Well, I'm more worried about me being used as a fucking kite whenever these winds pick up. So yeah, okay. So you guys head into this room, and now Truffle and Akane. From this point, you can see into there. And anyone else who's following. Um, you find in there the southern wall is like encrusted with it's like a vein that's of like gemstones that's sort of almost like it's split open like it's been pushed open with these things forcing their way out and it's like not like crystals but more like gems like diamond kind of things but they're glowing with this blue greenish light um, and there's, it's like all the way along this southern wall, like 30, 40 foot long and wow. protruding out. And the wind is like blowing from this room into your face. And there's a constant noise and there's like sparks of electricity, like arcing off of these crystals, like constantly ksh, 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 all across the room. Ksh, ksh, ksh. Um, and you can see... Um, in this room, apart from the crystals, there are three bodies. Uh, two are like on the floor, um, just sort of like in the middle of the floor. And they seem to be like covered in claw and bite wounds. And there is one up against the north wall, like about here. And it looks like they have been thrown up against the wall. And they're just like completely crushed, like their bodies just like splat against the wall, completely broken and cracked and ruined. Um, okay, Human? so yeah, I'm gonna look at the first body. Where is the first body? The closest body to the me. closest body would be about here. Okay, so I'd like to to go up to the. So about where? Sorry, so yeah, again. That, uh, adjacent to where you are now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to look at the body and see if I can. I guess see what I can see closer up. What, okay. Does it look? Does it have a patch? Does Ro it have? Does it look like one of the dust tower raiders? I mean, roll investigation, but you can, at first glance, you can see that it is wearing the tabard or the tunic of, you know, with with an that's insignia a, a on the sleeve. Six. Of the Dust Trail Traders, which is like, you know, half of a sun with half of like a wagon wheel with a stylized, like, italic D on it. Okay, so... Yeah, and other, other than that, you don't really find too much of interest. Okay, I'm going to rip off the patch and put 
put it in my pocket. Okay. You take the patch. And then I and I'll turn and I can't hear quick. And I'll uh, I'll leave my I'll leave my kind follow, of follow my voice. umbrella shield up against this wall here, and I'll kind of head over, um, and I'll just bend down and inspect kind of the body as well. Um, perform a quick medical check, I guess. Crap. To see kind of if I can feel a potted pulse. Um, yeah, make a medicine check. Clearly, clearly dead. What's the check? Eleven. Yeah, eleven. Uh, they are one hundred percent dead, and you can tell from the wounds that this was not like they touched the crystal and were struck by lightning or were killed by magic. It looks like they've been killed by some kind of creature. With claws or teeth or something. Okay. Um, kind of. I. I, I guess I, t I turn to the group. <coughs> Lysander, Orin, kind of get in here. Let's. We, we need. We just need to have a quick talk. As you are saying that, um, <laughs> you start to hear the <sighs> of like mists coalescing and this arcing lightning. <coughs> And then suddenly, out of almost seemingly out of nowhere, uh, a quartet of creatures pops into the room. They're these small, um, they're like small winged creatures and they've long noses and sharp claws and big teeth. And uh, they're probably only about three or four foot high, uh, sort of hovering in the air. And two of them seem like they're made almost completely of ice. And the other two seem like they're sort of like wind and dust coalesced into a creature. And it does. Sorry, go ahead. And they move to attack you. Roll initiative. Uh... And in fact, probably we'll stop there, but we'll roll initiative. <laughs> go, go, get it. <laughs> oh, no. Initiative. Well, let... Well, I put my fucking oh, shield down. Like... Yeah. <laughs> What's my initiative? You big old twenty-two. <laughs> oh, I've got to go That's right into it. Whiffs and rolls. Oh, I've lost my initiative, macro. Okay, I'll figure that out for next time. Well, you guys got 13, 11, 9, 22. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm back and I can't do anything. So, um, I think we'll probably stop it there, unless you guys particularly want to carry on. Uh, I think it's good. I think it's, good I think, I think it's a good time, because yeah. this, this may take a while, depending on what happens. Depending um, on how bad you, badass you made the creatures. <laughs> Monster Man, you know. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, everybody. That was awesome. Um, Thanks I... for letting us play in your imagination. Welcome to my imagination yeah. chamber. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm just gonna go ahead and end the stream here. Let's do that. Farewell. Thank, thank bye, you to everybody. Everybody. Bye, when, when, bye to when, anybody when, who's when, actually there. When are we next playing, everybody? What, oh, when are we next playing? I think it's two weeks, but it's on the Thursday, right? So the next session is the twenty seventh. Unless we, unless we're going to try and schedule another one, which I don't think is possible. I'm not sure it's possible, but we'll. Um, I'll, we'll, we'll, assume, we'll assume twenty seventh, unless anything crazy happens. Check I'll social stop. media. Smash that like button. <laughs> oh God! Smash it. I'll try and throw some more um, schedule-based stuff up on the page. So, um, if you're wondering, you can always come back to the page and check, and see uh, see when we're playing next. Or check out our merch page where you can get t-shirts. <laughs> there's there's and... no merch page. Eye <laughs> <laughs> patches. The, the, patches. Yeah, you can get mushrooms to lick. You can get <laughs> crystals. <laughs> and don't forget to hit subscribe. Crystals, which uh, are basically painted batteries. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Lick them. Uh, 
Cool. Okay. Well, that Thank chestnut, let's end that stream. Just